the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show do? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Feel the Beat, Wednesday, ah. August 3rd, 2022, and this sports show begins Avec the Speed Drop from Twine. Here we here go, Adam, baby. Adam, Adam, baby. Here we go. We are a little bit of a rough start there <laughs> for the first hour here on this Wednesday, August 3rd. We are just one day away from NFL football taking place. Yes, the Hall of Fame game is tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. And although we won't know any of the players playing in the actual game, and we will get a chance to kind of get a glimpse of what the new teams might look like, especially with... Doug Peterson, Super Bowl winning head coach now in Jacksonville. Remember when they decided to pay Christian Kirk, who would not be playing tomorrow night in the Hall of Fame game. That is kind of what offset this entire wide receiver market. Trevor Lawrence going into his second year. He's supposed to be a guy. Good news, he's not playing tomorrow night. Nobody we know will be playing tomorrow night, but we'll get a chance to see what these new coaches are putting into their new cultures. Uh, Obviously, Peterson in Jacksonville, Josh McDaniels over in Las Vegas. Mm. They've gone all in. All the players that you know of, they will not be playing tomorrow night, right. but we will get a chance to kind of see what is Josh McDaniels uh, Raiders team going to look like? What's the offense going to look like? We're hearing about what the new offense in New England is going to look like, Ooh. and we're starting to see little wrinkles and ripples all around the NFL, but tomorrow night we'll learn little to nothing, but we will be excited that in NFL football, a Duke was kicked off in a game with lights on and camera showcase. Okay. Hell yeah. That's right. Uh, some other important notes on the day. Uh, Bill Belichick has talked about the tampering situation with the Dolphins, as has Todd Bowles in the Buccaneers. The Dolphins have obviously addressed it, and Roger Goodell is going to be yelling at all the owners in Minnesota, either today or tomorrow, Mm -hmm. about the tampering situation that took place when Stephen Ross said, hey, Bob Kraft, fuck you. Yeah, (laughs) I'm sending my guy Bruce Beal, uh, vice president of this whole operation, the successor, allegedly, for the Miami Dolphins. I'm sending them directly into Tom Brady's DMs and they're going to chit-chat about Tom potentially becoming an owner of the Miami Dolphins while you just have him as Johnny Foxborough up there in New England, Rob. And then whenever he wasn't able to get the deal done because Tom Brady went down to Tampa Bay and had dinner, I believe, with the Tampa Bay Lightning owner, uh, Bill Gates, I think, and Derek Jeter. That's right. Uh, Tampa Bay was able to win him over uh, as soon as he signed back with Tampa and was uh, training with Tampa. Uh, Stephen Ross and Bruce Beer were like, hey, Tom, just know the offer's still on the table. Come own this. So he said to the Glazers, our family in Tampa Bay. Hey, fuck you. I'm going to try to get your quarterback to be an owner of my team and a player as well. So I guess Roger Goodell is going to have to handle that behind closed doors with all the owners who are saying, remember, we're in this together. Yeah. We're not trying to fuck each other over, Mr. Stephen Ross, man who came out and said, I made more money in one F1 race than all the NFL. <laughs> so now you're putting us down over F1. Mm-hmm. You're trying to pluck other people's players. Hey, Stephen Ross, I understand that Roger Goodell and the NFL decided to suspend you for six games, take a first, take a third, and fine you $1.5 million. We want to let you know your vote ain't worth a fuck in here anymore. Nope. Yeah. The next 10 years, any vote we were a part of, guess who you're voting with? Whatever the majority is. You are, <laughs> like, is that what What's happening? Because how do you really punish him even more? Yeah. The $1.5 million with his $8.2 billion net worth is absolutely nothing. Yeah. Him being suspended for six games, not being able to go into his suite. I assume he has a yacht that's right outside. Sure, and, sure. and they will have, I think they'll have service. I'm not sure if you can get internet onto a yacht these days. Dan Snyder said his couldn't because he couldn't zoom into the House Oversight Committee. Right. But if this motherfucker's out on a yacht just watching the game for six games, is he that upset? We're not sure. The first uh, uh, rounder that was being forfeited next year, they already have another one. Mm-hmm. And then the third round in the future who gives a fuck draft picks could be very easy to get as long as more GMs that are like Les Snead in LA continue mm-hmm. to come in the NFL where they fuck these picks mm-hmm. really the punishment doesn't seem like it's real at all unless there's more to the story that we're not going to hear about because this uh, feels like a billionaire's problem yeah not really ours fallout from the Deshaun Watson um Suspension. Six games. Obviously, everybody on earth thought it was going to be a lot more, except for maybe the uh, Deshaun Watson camp. Uh, Judge Sue L. Robinson, the first time she's ever ruled on anything uh, regarding the NFL and the new process in which an independent judge will make a ruling. And then ultimately, 
Roger Goodell is still the Supreme Court, though. <laughs> That's right. This happened because the players were sick of Roger Goodell being the judge, jury, and executioner for every single decision. New CBA comes around. They have to figure out a way to negotiate a real punishment process for when something either goes wrong on the field or off the field. So what they came to agreement upon was the Honorable Judge Sue L. Robinson, former federal judge who retired in 2017, was ready to get the gavel back in the hand. Oh, yeah, for uh -huh. sure. So the NFL and the NFLPA brought her, and this is the first time we are watching her process, which was created for her because players were upset about how much power Roger Goodell had, kind of come into play. The NFL now has until tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Um, to... Basically, appeal Judge Sue Robinson's ruling of the six game suspension for Deshaun Watson. And this is a pivotal point in this entire thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if the NFL does appeal it and they say, hey, Judge Sue Robinson, it's your first time here, you're mm -hmm. fucking wrong. Sorry, <laughs> Sue. Publicly, and to all the players in the NFL locker rooms, and we're not saying that we don't think what Deshaun was accused of isn't terrible. We all agree yeah. that it's terrible. And right. Well, the truth come out about what, how it all feels like we got a lot of similar stories from a lot of people from all over the country. Mm -hmm. uh, feels like there was a lot of, um, you know, narratives that, you know, Kyle Brandt said this, who will be joining us today. He said this on Good Morning Football. He said, unless the conspiracy that you believe is that these 30, 60 some, I guess, yeah. 30 some women came together with very similar stories, all found one lawyer for the lawsuit against Deshaun Watson because they viewed Deshaun Watson as a potential, hey, we can get this person. If you believe that conspiracy, okay, I can see that you think that the world is filled with just incredibly intelligent mastermind type people that can take advantage of people. Now, you're giving a lot of credit to a lot of people, but I understand why you could view that because technically that could have happened. Now, it sounds like all the stories are similar, so we feel like we kind of have a, a sense of what's going on, yeah. uh, but whenever the Texas uh, grand jury doesn't indict him, when Judge Sue Robinson said it wasn't violent at all, I think there is also people that start piecing together what it could have happened like, and in all of our brains, we all have an iteration of what happened between Deshaun and this entire situation, and pretty similar, but there's probably variants. There's people that are that probably assume every word that the uh, accuser said was true, there's probably some people out there that believe Deshaun Watson, he wasn't indicted uh, in this six things that Judge Sue Robinson said he wasn't. They're probably out there. Sure. And then I think a large majority of us are just kind of in the middle where we've been like, yeah, we assume this, we assume some of this. Mm -hmm. This probably took place. Definitely creepy. Somehow this couldn't happen. They ended up settling, so it feels like everybody's going to be able to move on with their life. We kind of have that. I feel that the NFL is going to say we do appeal. Um, mm. just strictly because of public narrative. Mm -hmm. And also, um, uh, so you, this is your first time in the NFL. And in the report, Sue said, trying to shift a dynamic shift in the culture of the NFL while n feeling as if they haven't given fair enough of a heads up to players as yeah. well. So they're trying to shift the culture, trying to shift the process, trying to shift everything. And they're trying to set a new precedent with this new independent judge yeah. and ruler. Mm -hmm. So if Roger Goodell and the NFL appeal... You could say it sounds like they're cutting this entire process out at the knee saying, hey, listen, you do it. Still Roger Goodell's world. We mm -hmm. still do this. I think what the NFL will do is this. I think the NFL will appeal it. I think Roger Goodell will inevitably give him more games. I don't think Deshaun will sue him because I think if Deshaun sues him, that opens up the entire case and it has to go to outside courts, not just Sue Robinson's NFL court. Mm -hmm. That would have to go somewhere. Now, would they make that court public like we saw Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? Mm -hmm. Or would it make it private? We won't hear anything. I assume the first, not the second. Yeah. Who knows what side's going to do what. But if the NFL comes back and says no, 10 games, and then Deshaun sues him, then it's held up in like appeals courts, and he could play this entire season basically. Oh, yeah. And then the suspension potentially comes the year after, like what happened with Tom Brady yep. and the New England Patriots. I think the NFL is going to come back with, let's say, a couple more games, like 10. Let's say Roger Goodell says uh, 10 games. And this, maybe he has Judge Sue Robinson up there with him while he's giving this. And he says, I appreciate all of her hard work. I appreciate the voluminous. Um, Amount, amount of, yeah. of research Re reading mm -hmm. what they said in the report and everything like that but we are both trying to set a new precedent with this new process with this type of manner we feel 10 games is the proper amount judge Sue robinson's power will still remain very powerful and go on and uh basically not bury the new process but also 
get a good sense of what the internet said immediately upon the ruling mm -hmm. coming and what the world said and everything like that, which the people say the NFL does. They check reactions to on how they're going to go. So I think it's going to end up being more games from Roger Goodell. I think he's going to try to put over the new process. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to bury the process at all. This is what I'm assuming is going to happen. I don't think Deshaun's going to sue. I think it's just going to be a, hey, let's move on, bygones be bygones situation. <laughs> and then seven games still. Most meaningful football games Deshaun's able to play. Uh, the NFL looks babyface. Yeah. And the Judge Sue Robinson process still holds a little bit of power. That feels like it's a, a potential, but we won't know until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning on whether or not the NFL appeals the ruling of six games at Tone Dicks. 100% agree with everything you said. One question, though. Is it 100% Deshaun's uh, decision on whether he sues or not, or does the NFLPA have a say in that as well? I'd assume it's... Ultimately, in the end, I think it's probably going to be okay. Deshaun and yeah. his people. The NFLPA probably pushed for it. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, these That's are our what, options. Yeah. We could do this. We could do this. But it feels because the NFL is in a, quite a bond here, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because Definitely. the NFL has to go yell at all the owners about, mm -hmm. you know, hey, trying to fuck each other over. Okay. Dan <laughs> Snyder on a Zoom call from whatever Napoleon's Island is yeah. into this thing. He allegedly is playing shell game with money with the other owners. Stephen Ross is calling owners saying, hey, listen, uh, or not calling owners, basically calling players that are on other teams yeah, and on. saying, hey, come yeah. on, fuck these guys. You should be peers. Yeah. You should come be peer with Robert Kraft, not working for Robert Kraft. What are you even doing? Like, I, they have a lot to settle mm -hmm. themselves. A good baby face for all of them would be, yeah, we should... We should change the ruling on what happened to Deshaun. And maybe they even changed the Stephen Ross ruling, too. I mean, who knows what's going to take place with it all. But the six-game thing, setting the precedent for this whole new process, in this case being yeah. the precedent setter, puts them all in quite a pickle. And they, I think they're really trying to figure it out, even though they got big old brains. Talk to the table. I pass the Connor Hattai Schmidt. Go on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sorry. No, go ahead. I mean, I just don't think they're going to do it strictly because it just carries it on. And then what, next week or the week after we get the Camara? And then after that, the Snyder thing doesn't seem to be anywhere near done. I don't know if we're going to hear anything about the Snyder thing, strictly because if he spoke for 11 hours, at this point, we might have heard something from so that. So you think Roger Goodell going hands off? Hey, hey Judge Hugh Robinson. Yeah, trust listen. the process. Well, that's why we got her. Yeah, hey, exactly. She's federal judge. Shit, my dad was a judge. What if Commissioner comes <laughs> up? What if Roger Goodell comes yeah. up? My dad was a federal we'll judge. I was not a fucking federal judge. No. I, what do you want me? She did you read all? I didn't read it all. You know why? I didn't fucking have to. Yeah. She, that's why we have. She said six games. We are moving on. Case dismissed. What if he has yeah, a gavel? Exactly. What if he actually ca has Possible. a gavel? Goes case dismissed. Let's move this thing on. I don't know. This that would be them missing an opportunity to potentially turn babyface. Yeah, and I, th and I think you're right. When you look at the public perception, like they know how people have reacted to this. Like six games, you know, almost unanimously is like you know. And then maybe it's one of those things where they want to turn babyface, but have they almost already shot themselves in the foot where they give him six, and now if they go up to ten, like are pe would people kind of be like, okay, you know, the NFL is trying to do it here, or would it just be the same? Like this is bullshit. Should be a season. Yeah. You know, like it. It's almost like they they pin themselves in a corner and now and you're really saying matters. that continues to it's extend just, the conversation it, it keeps it in and let's say you know maybe deshaun doesn't sue what if he does and then he's playing week one like is that going to be even well, worse no we can dive even deeper there because deshaun would want to miss his games this year not next year because his salary this year is one million right. his salary sure, yeah. next year Much is better, yeah. whatever so right. like aside mm -hmm. from the discovery and how you know, the court, who knows, because that'd be an open court, uh -huh. how that would all go in the whole thing and how much everybody would learn. And remember, Deshaun, from the very beginning, did not want a... Um, NDA. And yeah, right. he wanted to be able to talk about yes. this. Yeah. That was like months and months and months and months ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that Deshaun has ever uh, not been like, hey, I don't want anybody to find out about any of this. Alle allegedly, it was the complete opposite. Right. Allegedly, there was... Um, Almost agreements were made, but they couldn't come to. They had a number. That was yeah. part of the settlement, right? The settlement part that he couldn't agree with was the NDA. He right. Would, right. He did not want to be muzzled. He would like to be able to talk about it. And then it allegedly fell apart. Yes. And that was with, now they're, they've settled with 23 of the 24. Mm -hmm. Who knows what's going on with the one? Like, if what if that one goes to court? We could be visiting oh, yeah. this whole thing yeah. again. I mean, it's, Absolutely. the NFL, I mean, we're getting close to season. And, you know, there's some outstanding things to talk about. Mm -hmm. And by outstanding, I don't mean good. I mean, like, not finished yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and it feels like this Deshaun Watson case could come to a closure. Or by 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, they extended a couple more days, turned babyface. And uh, that's all she wrote. What if, what if he says, we appeal 7.30 a.m. press conference tomorrow morning? Yeah. Roger Goodell 
from his plane. Uh, we appeal, and we also suspend him four more games. All right, we just lost internet. Sorry, and then they just <laughs> yeah, then they just because <clears throat> that's who's making the decision. Who's making the decision to appeal? Roger Goodell. Goodell. Yeah, mm-hmm. Goodell. Who's deciding what the punishment is off of the appeal? Roger Goodell. Right. So if he doesn't want to waste any time, he can literally say, eh, we have chosen to appeal and we've thought about it. We're actually going to suspend him four more games. That's what the NFL thinks. Right. We think so. See you later. We're moving on. Now, if he was to be suspended 10 games, not we're, by the way, we have no fucking idea. No right? idea. Because the more we talk about it, the more I get conflicted on which yeah. way they'll go. Because does Roger Goodell just want to say, hands off, this is why we got this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't my decision. This was Sue's the NFL decision. and the NFLPA agreed on this, that yes. this is how this is going to be. This is not me. This is for, and if I was to change it, this would set the t- uh, precedent for everything. Yeah. Let her make her own ruling. My ruling has nothing to do with that. And he's just hands off and it's over and you move on. But Goodell, he has to know. The that. opportunity to go baby. That, there is an opportunity yeah. to be hero. That he yes, probably sir. will never get again. People hate his guts. Like, Everything he, he gets does. Booze, booed everywhere every, he goes. Unless he has the volunteer firefighters right, with cops, him. Cops with kids. him. Kids. Military with him. Which you'll never see him in public without, except for at the draft. And at the draft, it's a overwhelming. Yeah, cacophonous amount of booze. Because yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he's had to rule against everybody's favorite team. Right. Mm-hmm. Anytime he is talking, it's normally not something great happening to your favorite team anything yeah he is representative of 31 billionaires so it's not even really his, he is just and he makes 60 million a year <laughs> yeah. yeah so i mean he <laughs> is a heel i sure, mean it, for Rod, sure roger goodell is a heel just n- n- probably as a human i mean we see he sits on his leather chairs eats mm-hmm. his peanut m ms right normal guy probably drinks beers if sure. we had a guy. nfl football has go watch his nfl football college can't no, spend no. sorry no, no, no. sorry i'm busy on saturday yeah. football. maybe probably on tuesday as night. a human if you were in his friend group, you'd probably say, Roger's a normal guy. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Roger plays cards with Maybe. us. He mm-hmm. does that whole thing. But guy. And then everybody outside's like, oh, yeah, well, he fucking suspended my favorite player for your games for blah, 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 for blah. nothing. Oh, he took this away from my team. He chose to do this. He put our team in this. He did that. And there's those are always going to outweigh emotionally any of the uh, positive mm-hmm. things. So by trade, you are going to be hated if you're a commissioner of a league. Sure. Mm-hmm. So maybe Goodell doesn't even, maybe it's bad for the gimmick if he was to come out here. Maybe it would be bad for the gimmick if he was to come out here and turn baby. This opportunity is sitting here for Roger Goodell. Somebody else made a decision that nobody's happy about that he could supersede very publicly. It's like, does he want to do it or not? We find out by 8 a.m. Yeah, and it feels like, I mean, I completely agree. There definitely is this baby face, you know, turn that he could do easily. But don't you think in two weeks when the Snyder thing comes out and oh, he yeah. says, you know what, Dan Snyder, you're out. You, I'm, I will not oh, stand so for this. He's, this he's is my full decision. Full face turn, you're exactly. saying. Exactly. <laughs> he, goes, he goes back. He, and that's his baby face move. Like, hey, you know what? The people were pissed about Deshaun. I'm not going to, you know, do anything for... For Dan, aside from kick him out of the league. And what this if is he only goes, on me. For those that don't watch wrestling, Babyface is good guy. Good guy. Yeah. Heel yeah. is bad guy. Uh-huh. People make turns from bad guy to good guy in a smooth one punch or mm-hmm. one kick. It all happens. People, the most famous one, I think Hulk Hogan, that, that whole NWO moment, obviously, because he was the biggest good guy of all time. Then he turned bad, started spray painting his beard on. Right. That is a uh, Babyface to heel turn. Heels can become Babyface. Same exact in the opposite fashion. Bad guy takes out other bad guy in the name of good guy. All of a sudden, guess what? Bad guy is good gotcha. guy. Yep. Gotcha. Bad guy. Baby face. Bad guy's out. Yeah, you're a baby face. Like, this is just like storytelling. What if he does full baby face turn? Deshaun Watson thing. He adds on more to Stephen Ross. To yeah, yeah. Publicly says that. Snyder from the thing. You're out. See, See you ya. later. He starts donating all of his salaries to mm-hmm. things. Like, I'm donating 50 yeah. million to this. Yeah. Like, what if Roger Goodell goes on the most epic baby face turn in the history of storytelling? That would be remarkable, but it's not going to take place. No. No, no way. That's a, he's healed two weeks from now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe even two days from now. Well, and the owners are probably like, yeah, you, you want to be baby oh, face. Everybody like, loves we, Roger. Yeah, yeah, we need well. everybody to hate your fucking guts so you don't do a damn thing. You go out there, you shut your mouth, and you eat shit for the remainder of this year. <laughs> hey, Roger, you fucking like what you're doing right now? Yeah. Signing autographs, kissing babies, taking pictures. <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to be fucking doing. You're supposed to be fucking getting booed and yelled out of buildings. People throwing batteries at you? Good, because you know why? I'm walking right over those batteries and they're clapping for me. <laughs> I'm the one telling you to say these terrible things. I don't give a fuck. This is you, bub. You're a bad guy. So you go out there and you say, Judge Shoe Robinson, 
great lady big brain and move the fuck on. Yeah. <laughs> for Stephen Ross, you give him no votes the next 10 years. For Dan mm -hmm. Snyder, you tell that motherfucker he owes us all <laughs> hundreds of millions of dollars for what he has done and let's move the fuck on. You piece of shit. Remember, you are yeah. a piece of <laughs> shit. <laughs> what if that is that, happening? It's possible. I feel like that that is really likely. could be happening right now with the Roger Goodell. Yeah. yeah. And the Dan Snyder thing, like Jerry Jones, if Dan Snyder was withholding money from other owners, like I don't, I think Jerry wouldn't be that upset if he, you know, if Roger Goodell decided get Dan Snyder the hell out of here, especially because of him. I mean, him and the Papa John alleged meeting about it. Papa. This is the most division we have ever seen amongst the owners of the NFL. By far. The most. Honestly, this is a big deal what's happening right now. This whole tampering thing yeah. uh -huh. that they are never going to talk about again. Mm -hmm. The NFL will make sure that the, this tampering thing, everybody thought that we were doing um, – the tampering conversation to avoid the Deshaun Watson conversation yesterday, mm -hmm. and we were the puppets yeah. of the right. goddamn yeah, NFL right. or whatever. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Do you remember when people oh, yeah. were saying uh -huh. that about oh, us yeah. yesterday? Oh, yeah. Puppeteer. They are going to want this tampering thing to go away as quick as possible. Oh, definitely. I mean, this is, they are, this is, we do not talk about this ever again. There's going to be heated words, we assume, in a meeting today, and whether it's on a Zoom or in person in Minnesota, allegedly, mm -hmm. is where the supposed to meet is going to get. But they are going to try to put this to bed and move on publicly as fast as possible, unless our guy Mark Davis comes out. Yes. Yeah. With his backpack. St starter jacket on, uh -huh. backpack, little flat bill. Yep. <laughs> Game Boy. Yep. We're not happy with Stephen Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is. And then just walks off. That's the only time we've ever heard any type of division from mm -hmm. the, the NFL yeah. owners. It seems to be happening now at a rapid rate. And there's new owners in there. So what are the, is there a shift in dynamics in the ownership of the NFL, and what does that mean for everybody? Yeah, what if Walton, first owner's meeting, just comes in and big dicks everybody? <laughs> like, you know what? I got the most money here. My vote matters more than everybody else's. And what do they say? Because, like, did this happen with I, Pepper? That's not going to happen. No, yeah, I don't obviously. Think so. it's yeah. All, they're all Probably billionaires. They all. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know how those old school business guys get business done, but I think there is a little bit of uh, – I think it's going to be tough just going in and walking. Jerry a lot Jones of would leave a handprint on – Rob Walton's face if he walked in there and started yeah. acting like that. I can't get up right now, but fucking walk right over here, please. <laughs> yeah. Run your face into my hand. All right. Thank you. Pain. All right. Go sit down. Now, Kraft's going to do the same. Yeah. Kraft, <laughs> Go please. on, Bob. You know how Bob gets down, too. He'll smack the shit out of you, and he'll kiss you right on the cheek, too. Once you want to Kraft. It's a wild time in the NFL, mm -hmm. and training camp's happening. Jo joining us now. Okay. This is awesome. I'm excited. This is the first time. Yeah, here yeah. we go. I've been a fan of this human for a long time because obviously he and his brother are absolute trailblazers. Mm -hmm. Now, the name itself, his last name itself, is strictly polarizing immediately upon hearing it because you might have caught up with him at one segment of his life and he didn't love him. He's been famous forever. He's one of the smartest business people I've ever seen on the internet. And now, he is a legitimate rock star, WWE superstar. Built for it, made for it, host of Impulsive, co-founder of Prime. Hydrate? Hydrate. Delicious, by the way. Oh, Good yeah. stuff. Official drink of uh, the fucking Arsenal soccer team. No big deal. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Premier League. No shit. This guy. Yeah. That's fucking big brain. Incredibly handsome. Ladies and gentlemen, Logan Paul. Yeah! Wow. What's up, dude? Wow. I just got a standing ovation. Pat, you, you have so much energy. That was... Such a good intro. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here, man. I'm a huge fan. No. I love what you're doing. Logan, I don't need to hear that, okay? You're the guy around here. <laughs> we all know, and I appreciate you. Where are you right now? What are you doing? Are you training again right now? Yeah, dog. So that's why I'm late. I, uh, I was sparring. I'm, I'm a boxer now again. Okay, you getting back in the ring, or is this just for workout? Yeah, we're getting back in the ring. We're going to go uh, from professional sport to professional sport. Like, I want to get a fight uh, in December. Who? We'll see. I, I have some people in mind, um, but I can't say, Pat, you know, you only get one first impression. Like, that's part of my, uh, my, I think, ability to make moments. And uh, I like making first impressions big. And so I want to keep it a secret until we're ready. Okay. Well, I'm excited. I didn't know if I had missed something and you had already announced it. I felt like a jackass. So I'm happy I didn't miss an announcement. Hey, let's go. Huh? Here we go. Let's Here fucking go. go huh? Right, let's go. Uh, good luck out there. Good luck with training. Uh, the WWE has been something that you've taken to like a fish to water. Obviously, at WrestleMania, when you and Miz were tag team partners. And then just the other day at SummerSlam, you fucking killed it. Are you training full time? Is it like, all right, I'm boxing for a little bit then I'm wrestling for a little bit you looked unbelievable hey yoked yeah. you flew I mean the fucking dive yeah it's insane so it was insane you're, you're fucking you're are you a tip top shape right now and are you training boxing wrestling every single day Logan 
Um, so I cater my body because I consider my body like my my armor and we go. its ability to do certain things de depends on what sport I'm doing. So I cater my body to wrestling this time. I, I focused on on explosion because I knew that I knew that jump was going to be long, you know. And 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 by the way, I've been begging to get aerial. I I love to soar, dude. I feel so com so comfortable in the air and like. WWE let me go this time. So, you know, a lot of big jumps, a lot of big slams. And I'm, bro, I'm 27, like, and I'm working out like a fucking machine. My body is equipped because I'm young and strong to take these kind of falls. It, like, bro, I wasn't even sore the next day Duh. at all. Like, I couldn't have been more healthy and prepared for this. Good for Man, you, by the way. Insane, dude. Yeah, I, I honestly, I cannot believe that's me. Well, and then also you hit the frog splash like form in the air. Oh, yeah. So not only uh -huh. are you diving and you're not just like scared you're not going to make it or scared you're not going to hit there, you actually had perfect form and at the end exploded through it. It was, it was glorious, Logan. It was a fucking moment. <laughs> hey, this Thanks, will live man. forever, Logan. This is going to live forever. This moment. Thanks, man. I, I, I hope so, man. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy creating moments that i'll remember forever but it's much more important to me that i create moments that people watching will remember forever like when i watch that clip back i watch the fans you know i i want for sure i watch me a couple of times <laughs> yeah, yeah but i, I watch the reactions man and to see the wwe fandom which as you know is one of the most powerful fandoms in the world you know it's it, it really is a, a family and a universe to see them go from yep either not knowing or extreme dislike at the beginning of that match for me to by the end they're counting with me you know hands in the air taking pictures phones out like dude you, you can't write this like this i'm i i can't believe this is my life and i'm so blessed and thankful well you put on a hell of a performance and i think your read on that entire thing is an accurate one because that's what i was doing as i was watching i was watching it in the back and uh, I'm, look, I'm listening to the fans because you know it your entire life, right? People just hated you regardless because sure. of a decision. Because you've been famous now since you were how old? How old has, has uh, when did you start becoming like a, a notable human? Yeah, I was 18. So I kind of knew who I was, but not at all. Like, you know, I knew I was a young adult that wanted to do big things. But I, you know, I didn't find myself till I was 25, man. And you're right, like my whole life has been on camera and that comes with amazing blessings and, you know, sometimes even greater consequences, but I have no problem earning respect. You know, like I think that's how respect should be given. Like I'm fully prepared to, to, to show the WWE universe just how capable and uh, um, dedicated I am to this sport. I think, I think commitment is all that the WWE fans care about. And I think mm -hmm. the things that you accomplish in that ring, like, takes a lot of commitment to get to that point. Jumping through the sky, willing to risk your body while flying to the commentary table. Like, I think <laughs> WWE Universe, like actual wrestling fans, marks, if you will, were like, damn, this dude was willing to do this for our entertainment. Like, you saying respect was earned, I think... You 100% got that from the WWE folks. When did you know WWE was going to be a thing? When you were growing up, did you assume you're athletic, you wrestled right in Ohio? Hell no. No. <laughs> Hell no. Man. Why not? Why not? It feels like a match made in heaven, Logan. That's I've, I'm not going to lie. I've been asking myself the same thing because when I think about it, man, almost everything I've done my entire life has been building up to me performing for the WWE. Like, the stunts, the showmanship, the uh, the kind of like past, you know, young punk attitude. Yeah, the hate, the I mean, love, never, the I cheers. Know, like, yes, everything. As a career path, I just, I guess, I never considered it, and now it makes so much sense, you know. And after WrestleMania, which, by the way, I told you after uh, your match at SummerSlam, bro, I love watching you perform because oh, you always surprise me, man. You're come on you're, you're don't take offense to this but you're actually crazy athletic oh thanks <laughs> thanks logan i appreciate hey, you too man hey, you too. Bro, but, yeah, like, you too. but like i think people look at me and they expect me to be athletic no offense pat but like you know you're a punter pat. like i don't know i don't expect you to fucking do a backflip off the top rope land and jump back up on the top rope i understand i understand and i smoke a lot too i mean there's a lot of things i do that like yeah i i i'm 100 percent okay with what you just said but i appreciate that and you actually came up to me after SummerSlam and you said hey man i stuck around a while. like i appreciate you a lot because i'm a i'm a big fan but let's get back to kind of your journey here to becoming a wwe yeah. superstar obviously being famous since you were 18 and becoming a businessman um is something that just kind of gets forced down your throat were you ready for the business that kind of showed up because hey man you are fucking hey 
We're talking like, and I'm gonna pat myself on the back here. On this screen, like 20 years from now, people are gonna say, oh, there's two billionaires that were chatting to each other. <laughs> you know, like that, that's probably, that's gonna happen. And you and your brother have had that mindset for a fucking long time. Did you know that? What do you, do you watch Shark Tank? And you're like, that's how you do business? How, how do you kind of handle all that type of shit as well? It's a, it's a great question. So I have not always been uh, business savvy. In fact, this only, this only happened, me thinking about uh, the longevity of my, my career and, and my livelihood in the past, man, three years. Like uh, before 24, I promise you, while I made money, I didn't give a shit about business, man. All I cared about was creating. And now I don't know what it is as an adult, I, I, I'm able to work a little smarter, you know, and, and at, you know, pre 23, I think it's really hard to see what 30 looks like or 35, right? Like, bro, you're, a, you're I'm a kid with money and fame. I don't, I don't, I don't even know if I'm going to make it at that point. Yeah. Like, honestly, bro, the shit I was doing, like, I, I wasn't even sure how, how long I was going to live. Now I'm 27. I'm like, okay, life is good. I kind of want to prolong this for as much as I can. <laughs> I want to have a family, you know, I want, I want to do good for the world. And so, I'm able to work smarter and use the platform that I spent my early 20s building to leverage really smart business with with you know good product great partners and most importantly i think great marketing well prime hydra by the way marketing is everything you know that is why i mean every rich person knows that as well prime hydrate yeah. sounds to be uh, sounds like it's killing congrats on that um, thank you how did how did that come to be you're just you're in the lab hey hey listen i want a little better tasting a little bit more healthy <laughs> how do i how's this yeah, come to so, be? so i think i think this uh this conversation is significant because you know every influencer and their brother, mother, sister, family member starts uh, some sort of product, some sort of business, and uh, a lot of I them, have done Logan. that. A I've lot. done that too. Yeah, but but Prime is the one. I I can say with absolute and the utmost confidence, Prime is the one. We created a better for you, better tasting hydration beverage. Uh, we saw uh, a gap in the market where you know Gatorade is a legacy brand, but it's also archaic and not good for you. So what if we made something that tasted better and had Valid. literally a six of the calories with two grams of sugar? We did it. We made an amazing product. I partnered with my my uh, ex rival, now business partner KSI, and you know that story writes itself. So I have great partners, great marketing because it's built in with us, and most importantly, great product. I saw you grab the bottle after the SummerSlam match, man. I was pretty pumped up about that. You need to get some <laughs> of those on the commentary table, man. Let me no, go ahead and no, chuck I'll, some I'll, of that. I'll supply you guys with Prime. Yeah, give me your address, man. I'll send you a pallet. All right, man. Yeah. Uh, nine. Uh, <laughs> nine no. the, uh, deal, you've dealt with Triple H mostly in your WWE relationship. I saw he was on Impulsive. Great interview. I also saw Thank Nick, you. Nick Khan and Sonny in there. Uh, but how's Triple H? What has he meant to you? And is he your, you know, kind of, I don't want to say mentor in this entire WWE thing, but is he the one you would view as the guy you go to for every question you have man he, he's he, not no offense to triple h but this is this is not offensive at all but i truly feel like everyone at the wwe the higher ups all give me equal time attention and energy you know like yes yes he's helped me backstage yes we've uh texted about certain uh, moves or, or or the audience or you know he gives me plenty of advice but so does steph so does nick um so does kevin uh, you know, Miz helped me a lot too. Like, oh. I've never, I've never felt more, more like accepted as a, as an employee, dude. Like, I work for the WWE. Yeah, yeah, they get you right. Doesn't it feel like that when I went over there? It feels like the world. It, they're hustlers, right? They're they're business people. They're creators. They put on these massive shows, and they've been doing it for like thirty years, forty years. It's like who better to learn from on those? You know, Logan. They're they're so good, man. It is in well is a well-organized machine and i i'm i am continually surprised by how 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 much they can do effectively too like some of the shit they pull off is unreal man i mean titan forty-eight thousand people there watching you fucking fly through the sky <laughs> we're talking to logan paul um logan last question here before we let you go can't thank you enough for joining how many people on your team down there how many people on your team down there when you're sparring are you actually getting punched in the face like on a daily basis Oh, yeah, baby. We just fought some world champs just now. That's why I'm late, man. I was three minutes late. My assistant called. She's like, he's got an interview. <laughs> <laughs> you actually fight? Yeah, I'm fucking sweating. My mouthpiece is in my shorts, bro. Like, I'm in drink prime. Uh, I got, I got, Explain. I'm skinny, bro. I run skinny. I'm the opposite of my brother. I don't know if you chatted with him yet, but my man has a full on posse, 10, 15 people. I got three videographer, coach, chef, girlfriend. Four. 
I saw Mike. I saw Mike's big ass down. That was my first time. No, Mike's my girl. That's the girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, take care of your girl. Take care of your family. Take care of your mentals, man. You're doing a lot for a lot of people. We watch you. Obviously, continue to do your thing, and we appreciate the hell out of you, man. Love you, Pat. Love you, team, Pat. Thank you, guys. I'll see you soon, all right? Yeah, Logan Paul. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, Logan! Hey, what he did, that SummerSlam match is fucking unbelievable. That jump was Yeah, insane. that frog splash yeah. was insane. That photo is so sweet. Just put that up. Put that up immediately somewhere, yeah. Yeah. Logan Paul. You know, it makes him very, very likable. Was admitting that he was young and had no idea, like, well, and, and, as a kid, and like now I'm thinking about an adult being an adult and what thirty and thirty five is like. It made him very relatable, I think. Yeah, to everybody, and I try. I, I was very fortunate to meet a lot of people that were super popular and maybe fucked up too, like people sure. mm -hmm. didn't like them. And I meet them at, at, on the other side of it, and they're, you know, obviously scarred from the situation or from what they've done in the past. But like just relatively cool people and it i think you have to get humbled sometimes in life especially if you're young and have everything mm -hmm. had to happen to me it's had to happen to everybody for these young famous kids though it happens publicly like yeah. everybody sees it and then people are judging you forever for what everybody now granted you're getting paid to do it it's good living it's much better than fucking laying bricks yeah mm -hmm. so it's hard to complain about yeah, everybody saw what i was my mistakes i made in 19 because you were choosing to do it so it's there's no empathy there i don't think on that whole thing but also understanding that you're a vastly different human mm -hmm. 10 years down the road, nine years down the road than you were in your late teens when you were handed the world fame and everything you could have possibly wanted that could potentially change you into a not so great person. I've always had great respect for the people that have been able to publicly get through it. And then by the way, publicly continue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause that's tough. Like getting back out there after everybody in the world hates you, mm -hmm. that's another mm -hmm. level of like, from me, not for everybody, but for me, I naturally give respect to that because I remember how hard it was for me to get back into the world after I hit like rock bottom of embarrassment. So I got nothing but respect for that fucking guy. He is also yoked, yoked up. Very it's like 6'3", yoked, mm -hmm. handsome. Like, he's meant to be a WWE. Yeah. Well, going and that is why the WWE <laughs> thing makes so sense, is you look at, like, his almost life arc, and it is kind of that of, like, you know, what you would watch every week on WWE. Like, a lot of people hated him early. You, you know, we were just you, talking about the Roger Goodell. Uh, yeah, exactly. You string a couple performances like that together, like, he, he's, you know... Like, people are fucking showing up to watch him. It's yeah. not just, like, hate watching him. It's yeah, like, oh, this cheering. guy. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, cheering when he comes out. That's that. Go, that's a heel baby face turn. That's yeah, right. We go. were literally that's just right. talking uh -huh. about it's it. Funny. Yeah. Well, Roger Goodell chooses to do that in the next, what is that, 20 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. We shall see. Let's get to a break. We'll be back on the other side. Thanks to Logan for stopping a fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. World champion. That has to be so much fun. I just assume you get in there and spar. You try to knock people out in there, or are you actually getting punched in the face? Working on some Definitely stuff. Definitely getting man. punched in the face. Yeah. But the helmet, you got one of those helmets. Yeah. That doesn't protect my nose, no. by the way. Mm -hmm. I put one of those on. My nose beats the helmet. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like, are we in a length race or not? And my nose is like, I got you. <laughs> Who are just talking to? It says that type of helmet too. AJ. Like, AJ. Yeah, AJ. Spreads well, it does. Out the, the, yeah, because it hits and then it spreads the thing. deadens the blow. That sucks. Don't listen to AJ. I go to Oculus. AJ's right. What are you talking about? <laughs> in this, AJ in this was case. right about everything. <laughs> yeah. that Dr. Alan Sales came on and chatted. Uh, true. Pretty oh. unbelievable. I did potentially get a text from somebody that said, "How come he didn't ask Dr. Alan Sales about his COVID protocols?" For, oh, really? Uh, yeah. AQ is wondering, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was AQ. Yeah. <laughs> AQ is always getting blamed <laughs> yeah. for being the source. Yes. But yeah, I was asked why that just so. You know, a lot of celebration yeah. about him, you know, mm -hmm. telling Fotch. A lot of celebration, you know, about these new Guardians. Thanks for the... How come there's no conversation about, you know, the day-to-day -day of the yeah. whole... Yeah, his hands were tied. I was like, what do you want from well, me? Yeah. Come on. What are you supposed to do? What do you want from me? Sills' his hands were tied, too, okay? Finished terminal list last night. Oh, here First we go. Thing. Thing. Unbelievable. Oh, oh I yeah. know. What the fuck? Yeah. Didn't see that coming, Jaw did you? dropping. <laughs> oh, no. Legitimately. Let's Tell get to what. a break. Shook. Blackbird needs to get going. Let's get to a break. Final finale tomorrow. We're back. Here we go. All right. I'll see you guys in about four minutes. Uh, we'll answer some phone calls and hit all the news we got. We're feeling the beat in the second hour. Here Let's we go. go. Matt Money Smith. Smith, sorry. Host of Petros and Money. Hell yeah. <laughs> Almost put Matt Money yep. Smith there. Jordan Spieth still PJ golfer. Goddamn right. Bryson DeChambeau said, "I'm gonna be PJ golfer again too." Yeah. <laughs> Whether they fucking like it or not. That right, right, Tucker. We're going. We're going to court. We're yeah. gonna fucking gonna figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> 
Golf's gonna sneak its way back in the conversation. Definitely. Oh yeah. It's gonna sneak back in. Yeah, hopefully around Cutter. Matt Money Smith of the Chargers. Sal Capaccia. Sal Capaccia. Beat for the Bills. And then Matt Schneidman beat for the Packers. Feel the beat in the second hour. Yeah. Boots on the ground at training camp. We'll hit some stories up from all of those camps and more. And your phone calls on a 500 phone line, one 833 4 and 4 What's the most beer you did in one night you think of one of those shows? Well, i never forget when we went to Japan one time. Uh, Dudley, Stacy Keebler. I mean, there were so many people out there. We, I think we went through 103 or 108. Now, between just for myself, you know, I'd always make sure to have about a 12 or 18 pack there. <laughs> and, you know, here's the thing when some people say, oh, shit, man, you got too much of that beer on, you don't even know how to drink beer. It's like, dude, fuck you. <laughs> you don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to entertain 20,000 people in an arena. If I just go out there and sip it real properly, how fucking exciting is that? <laughs> So when you're out there on an empty belly and you're shotgunning beers and all that shit's going in, the, the half that was going in was for me. The half that was going on was for them. Nice. But I'm telling you, Pat, when you when you shotgun a bunch of beers like that and you're drinking about half of each beer, you got a pretty damn good buzz when you come out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a sacrifice I was willing to make every single night. I would assume you were pretty fucked up, yeah. When did and, you start uh, you self-cheersing? Know, when did you start self-cheersing? Was that something you did in college? You're like, hey, hey, Steve, good for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> when did that start? No, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to give credit to Sandman for starting that, but he was bashing him off his head, and, and I don't remember, and it wasn't because Sandman was doing it, so I don't want to say I copied him, but he was the first. So, and then my style was, because people always get us confused. I say, yeah, man, you used to bang them on your head. Oh, motherfucker, no. I was the guy that clacked them together. <laughs> it was just something we came up with. I don't know how the, the beers got introduced to the ring, but it became a thing, and we ran with it. Congrats to all the winners on this cash app winning Wednesday. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah. Feel Good the day. beat Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, the hashtag feel the beat winners are just announced at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show and the hashtag bum ass Corbin winners uh, just announced. What a good photo of me giving him a super kick right Hell on his yeah. fucking jaw. Bum loser. 
He was dressed really cool, though. Yeah. You that, see how cool he looked? That blue oh, yeah. little vest. Mm-hmm. And his vans were super cool, yeah. too. I got to see him up close a couple times where I was about to vomit because I was so tired <laughs> breathing in that human air. And I looked down, and I thought to myself, it was a really cool, cool outfit. <laughs> yeah. It was really cool. Wow. And then he punched me in the face one time, and I stood there, and I punched him back in the face. Uh-huh. That was quite a moment because we were both pretty tired. Dude. Mm-hmm. What were the shoes yeah. that you were wearing? Uh, I just had some sixes on, but oh, nice. they were like... Um, Certainly not supposed to be worn for activity. Yeah. Sure. Those are showcase shoes. Sure. Mm-hmm. Those are not do stuff shoes. That was bad. I mean, there was a lot of, a lot of bad decision made. Uh, we're able to get out of there with a dub, though. Yeah. That's right. Plus, it's really cool that you had people on the edge of their seats when you were acting like you were slipping on those ropes. I had so much balance. Yeah. yeah. I was able to act was like cool. I was off balance uh-huh. right. to give people the thought of, huh? What? Huh? Yeah. Huh? 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 To give these people a thrill. Yeah. And I, I mean, it worked. Yeah, I've sure been working did. on that in here, right? Yeah, for a yeah. while. Yeah, in our uh, in the ring that is mm-hmm. literally less than ten feet from here. That's right, yeah, on the other side of that wall. I've been practicing that. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Watch this guy. So I'll, I'll throw the paisano, uh-huh. and I throw it so hard. Boom! I'm so Italian. Yeah. yeah. It throws the body off, and now I'm surfing. Whoa! 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 Surfini! Whoa! 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 I mean, it worked perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> Just like the way you practice it. Just like, and then when I jumped up, foot slipped, and up two shins, top rope, while, uh, yeah. I'm, while I'm ah, bear hugging mm-hmm. Corbin. Yeah. Well, and you did. You, the week before, you said, hey, I'm going to have to do this at least seven, eight times today. Yeah. You know, so we're going to have to figure it out. Because I'm going to have to somehow land on my shins, and also I'm going to have to wear him down, put my body on him like I'm Tyson Fury, the big, Gypsy exactly. King. Exactly. Let me wear down this big guy. Yeah, Dirty boxing. Two. Right on, I practice it. You did. Look at these shins. You think these shins are happy? No. Nope. Uh-uh. Boom. Sorry, had to do it. We're bruised. Should have yeah. shin guards. I knew I was going to do it. Oh, Should have worn shin guards. I know. Now, Golly. Now, hey, now we know for next time. Next time. Boom. No, I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing that again. I can't do the Swan Town Surfini Bombini yeah. True. ever again. No. Nope. Different iteration. Yeah, because Maybe it, next SummerSlam. No, yeah. no, no. We'll do something. We'll, we'll do something. Maybe something walk different. on the ropes. Maybe walk on the ropes. The balance was so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe I. Uh, Wild and Wonderful Wendell's, whatever the fuck their name is. What's sure. <laughs> White? No, no, no. The, uh, <laughs> oh, the flying Willendis. The Willendis. Yeah, the yeah, Wild and the... Wonderful Willendis, dude. Yeah. yeah, I'll walk. I'll have one of those balancing yeah. bars. Mm-hmm. I'll fucking pull it up like it's uh, like Drew McIntyre's sword, Angela. Yeah. I'll pull that thing up from the side of the rope. Yes. And then I'll walk around the entire thing. <laughs> yeah. And I make the whoever I'm fighting at the time, if I have any beef with anybody, probably not, by the way. This is just if this happens mm-hmm. at any place, any time. I'll walk so fast they'll get dizzy from following yeah. me. Oh. And then it's just like the swing and then they just fall. Yeah. And then I'll put the thing back down, hop down, right. leg drop, one, two, three. How high Four. is the, Oh my God. That's the How way to do it. How high is the ropes from the actual ground, do you think? No, oh, I probably should know that number. Twenty by the way. feet going right? forward. If it's anything 20, over six, twenty-five. Like two stories, over three six, stories. Eight, yeah. Seventy feet. Yeah. Six to eight feet. You're going to need a net underneath, is what the Willendas would tell you. Oh, oh that's that's nice. special well, shoes. You could nice. use that pole too right. as like a pole vault and pole. So instead of putting it back down, you, you use it to do over a the ring. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We will put a pin in this. We will circle back, okay. All right. and we okay. will certainly do more brainstorming for some more moves for the next time if it ever comes. By the way. I get along with everybody now. Mm -hmm. Even bum-ass Corbin. You know, it was nice. Afterwards, I just felt this weight off my shoulders that I no longer have to hate a guy that I used to, you know, love. Sure. Sure. I don't know how he feels. I haven't heard from him. But maybe when we see each other. Ah, who cares? Yeah, you're right. I'm going to say God bless you. Yeah. Hey, Godspeed, dude. Remember remember we had those cool vans on, look super cool. Mm -hmm. Super kicks you right in the fucking mouth. Remember Cole that? was Beat not happy ass. when he came out wearing Colts colors. Cole yeah. was quite upset. He had the horseshoe yeah. on his chest. They, they, uh-huh. they, they. I saw, I was looking up, because I was walking to Gorilla as he was going out, obviously. Right. And uh, I think that's why the choir started early, because I made eye contact with him. I'm like, yeah. here yeah. we go, boys. Yeah. It's time. Let's fucking hit these, Let let's hit these nuts. Mm-hmm. And then they just started singing, which interrupted. I seen that on his chest. I was disgusted. Yeah. Disgusted. Disgusted. Because he's doing that because he's walking in Tennessee Titans Stadium. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And the Colts are the Titans right. But I played for the Colts. So, so he's stealing it. What's it's he so yeah. Double heel. But remember, we're cool with Corbin. Yeah, yeah. now he paid the price yeah. for that. Yeah, mm-hmm. he did. Boot to the mouth. Mm-hmm. 
early in that match. You should right. see what uh, the Miz says. Maybe at Tahoe next year, he might need to, you know, learn. You think a Miz is getting invited back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got to invite the worst guy back, of course. <laughs> Set know. the bar low. I don't know, man. I talked to him a little bit. At, I talked to him <laughs> oh, a little bit at SummerSlam. Oh, is he done? About the whole time. No, he certainly wants to go he back. He wants yeah. the invite. I think he's going <laughs> to get. He was the worst. RG3 is going to have to drop out. Of well, was that's say. what I'm saying. He's probably. <laughs> I'm just assuming. Triple sticks ain't going back. I would like to put this documented on the record. I love The Miz. Yes. Okay? I fucking love The Miz. I could be around The Miz all day and be entertained by The Miz uh -huh. because I view life as a movie and people as characters in the movie. So I don't really take anybody too serious. I apologize to everybody in the past that has met me that is just now learning this. It's just a movie character coming in and coming out. Yeah. The Miz's movie character, every time it comes on the scene in my movie. <laughs> yeah. Captivated. <awesome. laughs> yeah. It is must watch the yeah. entire mm -hmm. time. What he's saying, mm -hmm. how he's acting, how people are reacting to him. I fucking love it. Every thing about even at a golf course in which we first saw him play golf here in indiana and obviously the golf course was not nearly nice enough for what the miz needed sure no, the miz happen. needed much nicer grass sure. mm -hmm. he needed better sand the water wasn't good enough it was just everything that came out of his mouth i left much like the bob evans character on the offer yeah. mm -hmm. the, oh, every booby. everything that came yes everything that came out of his mouth i left the miz the same exact way with that being said, I'm not sure everybody feels that way. <laughs> no. And it's a shame. It's a fucking yeah. shame. I wish everybody felt that I mean, way. Anthony Anderson couldn't get, couldn't deal Three with times. it. Yeah, and he was only doing what two couple swings. I mean, if Charles Barkley's telling you to hurry up, too, like, you, you really know that. Yeah, <laughs> just happened. Who's telling everybody? <laughs> Ah, the Miz is awesome. awesome. A lot of wrestling today. Logan Paul, WWE superstar. Uh -huh. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to. Uh, Mikey in Phoenix on the Five Energy Fun Line. What's going on, Mikey? Pat and the boys, how are you now? Good and you, not so bad. Uh, I'll get right to it. Ty, <laughs> are you going to be more devastated this Good year call. when Joey Gallo beats you in the World Ooh. Series or in 2001 when Gonzo and the boys walked it off after out Alcatel? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Mikey. Great call. Love everything you just did. Uh, anytime you want to call in and have a full conversation with yourself, <laughs> acting as if you're us as well, Good. Got to deliver it good, though. Don't be stumbling through it. No. Mikey really did great there. And then immediately attack somebody and talk mm -hmm. shit. Good phone call. Mikey, we, we appreciate Mikey. that call on a 500 Maybe phone call. That's Arizona. That's Dodgers talk there. Right? He, uh -huh. he's yeah, talking I think about you that? might be a Diamondbacks fan, maybe, because uh, okay. they beat the Yankees in the 2001 World Series. But, you know, very inside baseball call there. Not a lot of people knowing what you're talking about. Maybe not the best idea. Uh, so here's call. Ty responding, by the way, to you, yeah. Mikey, saying, oh, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Barry yeah. Connor, like that eight-year-old did. Yeah. You're not <laughs> right to the point. All right. You know? No, I enjoyed that call. Was, uh, Dodgers, though, potentially going to be a team? Yeah, they're very good. They, the Yankees, the one guy who's been like killing the Yankees all year long just got traded to the Dodgers. So he's saying, hey, what if you know later in the season he bites the Yankees in the ass and he plays well against them for the Dodgers? Not going to happen. The guy stinks. Okay, so <laughs> Dodgers come up, though. I don't know shit about fucking baseball. Mm -hmm. Vin Scully passed away, right? Yeah, he did. Four years of age. Mm -hmm. Very old. Let's have a moment of silence for the play-by-play -play guy for the Dodgers. Yeah. For like... 50 years. Yeah, a long time. Very long years, time. Yeah, like 70. 70 years? Mm -hmm. I Holy. think he also did PGA stuff. He called NFL? You know, yeah, NFL games. Uh, he did it all. But yeah, like, you know, in baseball at least, everyone today, you know, like greatest of all time, bar none. Okay, well, rest in peace, Vince Scully. We appreciate your commitment to the world of sport. We will now have a moment of silence for a man who called it all, been there, done that with everything, and everybody seems to love. Moment passed. Thank you, Vin. Hey, drop one down, Vin. Thank, Thank you, Vin. 1950 to 2016, he was the Dodgers playbook. 66 years. Jesus. One more phone call here on the 5 Energy phone line. Let's go to Aaron in Montana. Aaron, what's going on? Hey, how's it going, boys? Hey, it's going good. Not bad. How are you? <laughs> what do you want to talk about, brother? <laughs> hey, I just want to know. I'm a big Vikings fan. I want to see uh, what you think about... Uh, Kirk in the new KLC offense, if he's going to thrive with that, if he's going to struggle, and is this the year for the Vikings to finally uh, you know, make up that oh, ground yeah. on the Packers? Aaron, quick question, because we're coming up on a hard out here. Uh, do you think Kwesi uh, was right when he said you don't have Tom Brady, you don't have Patrick Mahomes, you just got lousy-ass Kirk Cousins? Hey, I mean, it's a loud statement to make in year one, but... We need some production out of Kirk. With <laughs> oh, Aaron. wow. Aaron's like, now listen, we just certainly don't have Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes, but maybe Kirk's the guy. He has not proven to be so yet, but nope. we need some production out of him. I cannot wait to... Um 
music's not working. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time we tried to play. You made it, though. You made I mean, <laughs> music's not yeah, working. Yeah, they That's know. the heart out. They know. <laughs> that is the heart out. They know. Um, I see. I just assumed that it was such a clusterfuck of an operation over there in the Zimmer era that I'm not judging Kirk Cousins directly off of that. And it might be because Kirk has come on the show, improved himself to be a dog yeah. Yeah. and a human, and his teammates are saying the same thing about him. So maybe I'm being a little bit biased in his favor. I don't think he's being fairly judged about his performance thus far for the Minnesota Vikings. Won a playoff game with them. Yep. They're yeah. in fucking Aaron Rodgers' division. Stats are, stats are really good. Stats are stats really are good. Now, they always had that oh, big time. game thing, but he won multiple yeah, primetime uh-huh. games and big games. The team, they didn't, they had some injury shit that happened oh, in yeah. there. Yeah. And it's coming out that him and Zimmer did not like each other at all. It's like, I don't know if that is necessarily a fair assessment, but he's also making like 30 some million guaranteed. So judge somebody who's making that much money, however the fuck you would please. But I feel like Kirk is going to have a great year this year. I think that's what it is, yeah. is that for how much they're paying him. Mm-hmm. And just speaking as a Packers fan, I think part of it too, and I'm sure Vikings fans feel this, like he's beat the Packers a couple times, but typically like they, that's where they kind of like late in the season, there'll be a division game, Packers and Vikings. And like he, he that has, matters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he has tended to not play as well in those games. And I think those ones kind of, I mean, but like you said, like it, Rodgers has been in his division, you know, for his entire time he's there. Like, it's it's tough. Yeah, but we are, um, you know, we just say super pro stuff about Aaron, sure. you know. True. True. So us just saying that he's in Aaron's division isn't saying much, but. Yeah. He's in Aaron's division. Mm-hmm. That should be talked about. And the only, when he won the playoff game was the year that Rodgers got hurt and didn't play, you know, the back half of the season. So it's like when Rodgers has been healthy. The Packers have won the division. Good it's, news, Kirk probably better than everybody feels he is. Bad news, Aaron's still playing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, true. just stats say probably not going to go great. But if you do think to Mikey's point and to Questy's point, Justin Jefferson's going to have to get paid. Yep. Adam Thielen's going to get paid. Mm-hmm. Dalvin Cook already paid, I think. Yeah. I so think, young yeah. quarterback, if you could find a young quarterback that, you know, I don't want to say like, oh, if you can draft a Mac Jones, you draft Mac Jones. But if you can draft one of these younger quarterbacks that can make all the throws and has a big brain, you can spend money elsewhere, which is probably what Questy was uh, alluding to whenever he said what he mm-hmm. said. And also why Vikings fans are probably like, hey, Kirk Cousins uh, era, although not fair, also pretty expensive. And maybe mm-hmm. we can move on from the Zimmer era with it. I got, That makes sense to me, I guess. Yeah, he has had a bunch of uh, offensive coordinators. I know him like the lot. Music's working. Let's fucking go. Did but- you just turn it off there? No. It started out of nowhere. No, keep it up. Let's see what happens. All right, everybody move. Let's see. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Because there's a wire maybe. I was going to say, these cords underneath me, I know. I kick them very often. All right, music's working. Let's go. Look at us. Here we Mm -hmm. go. We're back! Hell yeah! Uh, but Kirk Cousins, you were going to say something there, I think. Oh, yeah, he, he's had a bunch of OCs. Like, Stefanski left. I know the guy before Stefanski also left while Kirk has been there. So he's had different coordinators. But it's now or never, you know? Yeah. They got to win now or they're screwed. And the one time he was on primetime last year, I remember specifically, it was when Cooper Rush and the Cowboys beat him in Minnesota. <laughs> so <laughs> he does have those games where it's like, what the hell are we doing? All right, so maybe I'm being a little bit too nice to Kirk, but I got faith in Kirk. Yeah. Hey, come on, Kirk. Love the Vikings. Great like merch, too. Kirk's Spartan up there, ain't he? Oh, oh yeah. Hey, Dealing. go green. Go white. Jesus. And Baby Foxy's back. Let's go. go. Screaming wildly racist things in a microphone. Well, I hate to say yeah. it, too. The Lions should have beat the Vikings twice last year. They did beat them once. It was their first they win of the well. year. So that's kind of tough for Kirk, too, and I love Kirk Cousins more than anyone. Man. It, yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> I can't wait for Tuesday. I cannot wait for Oh, oh my God. Oh, Hard Dogs on Tuesday. Yeah, must watch. Fucking A. He's mic'd up the whole time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Motor City Dan Campbell is mic'd up yeah. the entire time. Oh, yeah. The only clips we've seen from Hard Knocks coming out on Tuesday of the Detroit Lions training camp, MCDC's got a hard mic on his. Uh huh. They're getting him in every moment, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Should be 40 minutes. As they should. Don't do anything else but MCDC the entire time. This is just like they had Ursay. Fucking get, give yes. us Ursay the entire time last time. Yeah. Don't give us MCDC. Don't yeah. waste any time on someone that's getting cut. Golf. Up All right. We're back, <laughs> in, we're back in two minutes. Don't waste any time on golf. Don't <laughs> yes, do it. We get it. We get it. He did the golf course. Yes. yes. Give me MCDC. That's it. For an hour mm-hmm. on HBO. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're back in about a minute and a half with AJ Hawk and more chitter chatter, and also feel the beat. Woo, our brand yeah. new segment. Don't 
I'm breaking the table, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I just break shit. Sorry, man. <laughs> Somebody oh, yeah. came sprinting behind the barrier and tried to spear him. He I fucking dare somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I dare the next two. Ass kicking. What? what? Tony Arabia. What? Rio. What? Take a jet plane. What? All the way there. What? All the way back. What? All the way back. What? WWE champion. What? Thank oh. 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 you, <laughs> champion. Destroyed our shit. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show do? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. It is Feel the Beat Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. Hour two begins right now. Here, Here we go, go baby. You, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the show. The show. It is a joyful occasion, Good. obviously, this Bad Wednesday, hand. because we are one day away from being able to say that NFL football is happening today. Tomorrow Woo. night, the Hall of Fame game, where the Raiders will take on the Jaguars, and players that we have no idea have ever existed will battle in NFL uniforms on an NFL broadcast. Right now, the line has changed Whoa. again. The Jacksonville Jaguars are getting two and a half points in Canton, Ohio, wow. as they take on Jared Stottom, Nick Mullins, and some random guy that'll be selling insurance just a couple months from right now in the Raiders at minus two and a half. Kyle Slaughter. Over under 30 yeah. and a half. Jacksonville Jaguars will obviously feature uh, Jake Lutton, mm -hmm. Kyle Swar, and uh, Drake from State Farm getting a couple touches at running back for the Jacksonville mm -hmm. Jaguars tomorrow. Over under 30 and a half points. Uh, everybody seems to think that the under is a solid bet in a Hall of Fame game, but this one might get a little bit slicey and dicey out there with Doug Peterson and McDaniels, two offensive minded head coaches, trying to implement a new culture. I like the over. At 30 and a half. Okay. Even though while watching the wow. game, I am going to think to myself, no season, same dumb fucking brain. Why would I ever bet the over on this game? Uh, but I'm coming out swinging on this brand new season of the NFL. I was originally thinking Raiders in the under, but you know what? I was thinking Kyle Slaughter, he's, he's a USFL guy. So he has recently, like in the last month, been under live fire with guys that are going to be on the field Thursday night. Same exact talent level. He is going to be in his comfort zone. Look for Slaughter to throw for maybe 350, 400 yards. Okay, Whoa. so Slaughter with a tud. I don't okay. know if that's a yeah. bet on Fando. Okay. They're going to have to dive deep into the roster to get some props here on Fando for this Hall of Fame game. We like Slaughter to throw tud, and we like the fucking over. I like the over. I, don't, I think I, don't... I do, too. I think you're right. Two new head coaches. These guys, maybe they do. It's like, hey, let, let's try to fucking. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, talks table at Tashman at Boston Connor. Tone digs one half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys, great gamblers on the internet. Uh, joining us now is a man who might know a little bit better than both mm. of us. A man who's college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, Ryder Cup champion, COVID survivor. Holy yeah, that's shit. Right. Three he, times? He, Shout out. Well, I don't know how many times. Okay. Not three times in his last week or two. It's being reported the president has uh, COVID 19 again. <laughs> Get president well soon, Joe. Of Joe, the United okay. States? This guy is what, 70 something years old. He's about to be COVID for the sixth time. Shout My out. God. Wear a mask, Joe. Yeah. I'm what getting COVID fuck? every other day. I think he is wearing them. I think that's, oh, that goes no. into the conversation. Is, is he just well, telling people telling that if you... No, no. You can we're not wear getting a mask. Hey, hey, oh, 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 three times oh, oh, in oh, oh, days. You can wear fucking masks. Oh, 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 oh. Go back to bed, Joe. <laughs> Jeez. Chocolate chip, chocolate chip. That is what happened <laughs> right before we came onto the air there in the second hour, mm -hmm. which carried into so. the on-air 
shenanigans that you heard early. There's a lot of wonderings on how this potentially happens. Yeah. For what, the most protected person probably, if that's happening, like what else? And should we get a more of a heads up on what the deal is? You know, because Kyler's out for five days. Pete Carroll's yeah. out for five mm -hmm. days. There's other people out for five days that are in the prime shape of their life, cannot go to camp with no symptoms, but potentially a president, I don't know if he's in prime shape of his life or not, three days still operating at a high level. What's going, why are we still having anything? Who knows, maybe there's different strands still. May we hope everybody survives. What, right. what happened to the 90 day period after you tested positive? Thought you don't get it for 90 days no matter what. Well, so that would be the antibody conversation. I don't know if we're equipped to have that one either. So we will move on. <laughs> Joining us now is a COVID survivor who may or may not have the antibodies, if the antibodies even exist now. Oh, right. We do not know what the rules are on anything other than this show is the dumbest every day, and we are continuing <laughs> to prove that rule to be true. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hall. Yay! AJ! You got the Perfect antibodies. Timing. You got the antibodies. Perfect. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. I don't know. I need to take a test, right? But what a what a great, great timing. Con man telling the president to go back to bed. The tone is getting <laughs> a little worked up. It. I like it. AJ, listen, this show has been rather awful today. You yeah. hear me? <laughs> Logan Paul came on, and we were very lucky to talk to him. He was great conversation. He's got done sparring and boxing. And his, his drink prime hydrate uh -huh. is taking over the globe in its genre, in its marketplace. And he's really accomplishing things. And then I look around at what we're doing today, and I'll tell you what, two different paths. That's us, right. Us and Logan Paul. Should we restart practice today? Uh, you were, <laughs> period one, fucking <laughs> yeah. run the opener. Please run the, no, I'm joking. Please do not, please do not. Let's dive into it. Uh, the NFL has until tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. to appeal Deshaun Watson's ruling from Judge Sue Robinson. And AJ, I, I don't want to talk about the same thing every single day, but hey, that's been the last four months of this show, basically, yep. uh -huh. because there seems to be little... Uh, crumbs that come out daily for us to continue to expand our convo about it. But we are torn. I came into the show thinking and assuming that Roger Goodell would make a baby face turn here. He would take this opportunity where somebody else made a ruling that he did not, and he saw the reaction from basically every human, including Browns fans, including Browns fans' reactions, that are like, this is not enough. He could come out with the way the process is and say, uh, we're trying to set a new... Um, precedent here with Judge Sue Robinson, but we cannot allow this to be the first ruling. And Judge Sue Robinson and myself have agreed. Okay, we, ten days or ten games is good. Boom, that's going to be the suspension. He's babyface for everybody. Will Deshaun sue it and hold this up in appeals? He's only making a million contract next year. If he holds this up in appeals for a year and he plays that next year, I think it's like forty some million dollars. He potentially misses if it's like the Tom Brady deflate gate year suspension delay until the next season. Or do you think Goodell goes, I didn't fucking make the ruling. I don't want to make the ruling. I'm not reading all that shit. We are sticking <laughs> with six games and we are moving on. I got to go tell the owners to stop fucking each other over after what Stephen Ross just did to Kraft and the Glazer family and Snyder was shell gaming money to all of us. So Judge Sue Robinson read thousands and thousands of pages of shit. I'm not. We move on. There's he, Both ways in my head are feasible, I think. Don't you? Yeah, it's definitely possible, but I, I don't think he ends up appealing this. I, I just think they don't want to do this. The very first ruling she ever has, he doesn't want to have to step in and do what the reason that she is there is because people don't want him having full and complete control. So if he jumps in and snatches control from her right away on their first decision, what does it say for the future? Yeah, see, I think he could in his promo. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think he yeah. could protect. I think he could protect that process still yeah. in his rollout of it all. He wants it to be over, though. He wants it over just as, just like Deshaun wants it over. They all need it to, to not be talked about every single day. Let's look at the Browns' schedule here real quick because currently he's out for six games. Jacoby Brissett will be the starter for the first six. It's Panthers, Jets, Steelers, Falcons, Chargers. Okay, so Chargers obviously a team. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Mariota, by the way, I heard is slowing Yeah. Lighten it up. Art Mariota good. is having oh, a good training right. camp down in Atlanta. Oh, shocker. Yeah. We will have to feel the beat sometime with somebody in Atlanta, yeah, uh -huh. maybe next week or the next time we do this, mm -hmm. because that is a team that nobody has talked about. No, at all. Mariota gets signed down there, and nobody fucking even talks about it because they didn't get to Sean Watson, who they were in on. Remember, Mariota, in relief of Derek Carr, when we thought his groin actually popped out of his body mm -hmm. on Thursday Night Football, came in and threw for a hundred, couple of tuds. Yeah. Darren Waller lit Rushed it up. Rushed for several as Yeah, well. he was all the way back. He was started for the Titans whenever they were in playoff contention. And then he, you know, Tannehill takes over. He goes to a new home. Who knows what that team's going to look like. So we can't just say, hey, the Falcons are going to be a problem for the Browns. But they might be. Yeah. Steelers, 
they always are a challenge for Browns know the teams in and out. Both sides do. Uh, that defense is going to be a problem for anybody, even if Deshaun was playing. Will the Steelers' offense by week three have any resemblance of a team that can fucking move on that Browns' defense? Probably not. So that's going to be a low That'll score. That'll be a 9-6 one. Yeah, that's going to be an yeah. ugly game. Jets game, we have no idea. We assume the Browns will be able to win that with their roster. Yeah. Panthers game is going to be difficult, right? I mean, that's Cleveland at Carolina, mm-hmm. Baker's new home. All signs out of Carolina Panthers camp are that Baker's probably starting that thing. Mm-hmm. And Matt Corral, also a guy. Yeah. yeah. That's what people are saying down in Carolina. Oh, also Baker not probably starting. Corral is a guy. Diggs wanted Corral <laughs> to be a Steeler because he's a blue collar guy. He actually punched Gretzky's, yeah. Gretzky's kid yeah. or grandson. Yeah. Yeah. Kid. Yeah. Kid in the face, got kicked out of some prep school, had to go to some public school, ends up at Ole Miss, tatted up like. Sup. Dog. Dude, dog. We would like to be friends. Yeah, I think yeah. he's a dog. I think we Super like- quick release, too, though, on Corral. I like watching him throw the ball. They say he's guy. And Lane Kiffin's offense is not easy. So I assume he came into the NFL pretty equipped. But those first six games, Patriots also at the end of that. You know, with that roster, should split it. Yeah, I yeah. absolutely. Should go three and three, uh-huh. right? And if you go three and three with your backup quarterback, uh, while a two hundred and thirty million dollar quarterback is not able to play, that's a good spot for the Browns. And then now they got games that matter going down the stretch. Eleven games going through. I don't think the Browns are really that deeply affected by this, AJ. No, they shouldn't. They shouldn't be too worried. I mean, they should honestly be better than three and three if you look at it. I mean, the first four games, there's definitely quarterback questions. We know. Yeah. Zach Wilson's the only one, only quarterback returning to the lineup, I guess, for his team in those first four. We'll see if his offseason workouts tend to give him success on the field. I don't know. But everywhere else, they're all, they have a new guy basically coming in trying to take the helm. Yeah, but Chargers are going to be tough. Oh, right. that's what I'm saying. The first four. Then then those last two, you're on your own, guys. Oh, yeah. You're thinking Carolina, Jets, Steelers, Falcons. I was strictly just giving Carolina the edge because Baker's going to be yeah. on a 1,000 down there. game. But I'm thinking Miles Garrett and that defense, though, getting after him. Well, and Chubb and Hunt. Why the fuck am yeah. I even worrying about the energy of the Carolina Panthers? Yeah, Amari Cooper's very good, too. And they have Amari Cooper And now. Jacoby can sling it. Yeah, yeah, he can play. And manage a game. Now, everybody says managing a game is bad, but Jacoby can manage a goddamn game. Yeah. you got two running backs, a great offensive line, Amari Cooper, and that defense okay i'm baker good luck out there i mean you're gonna play great oh miles garrett's gonna fucking body him. yeah i'm having oh, four no. of those first six games at home man. too definitely doesn't hurt and the two games that they play on the road are arguably the two worst teams of the six they play to start the season so oh. here we go cleveland Schedule browns makers huh. be six and oh. what yeah how'd that work schedule makers must have known something was coming down the line and wanted to give them an advantage that's weird oh. you're speaking is this inside voice or outside voice oh you're... shit <laughs> it sure sounded like you were just uh, talking uh, inside thoughts there through the microphone. But with the million dollar salary, you know, where he's getting fined yeah. six games. 333000 This first six games being the easiest run of their entire thing. Suspensions don't void the guaranteed money either. Uh-huh. It's hard not to be like, this all seems to it's be a little pretty fishy. Smells. They're pretty nice here for the Browns and for... Deshaun Watson. Now, we do know the schedule was already made, right? Yeah. Yeah, schedule was already made. Mm -hmm. And why would they want to take care of the Browns? Hey, the Browns deserve say it. The, Steelers. the Browns deserve no, it. I would don't never say do. Yeah. The Browns have been through a lot. Cleveland has been through a lot. Cleveland has been. They just changed the name to the Guardians. They're still reeling from that. And- oh, yeah, and I saw it. Guardians so, merch not moving. No, no it's not. There's still loose trash just rolling <laughs> what's, around. What's so funny? Bring, bring back Wahoo. <laughs> Is it really? Is merch not moving? I didn't hear that. No. I think I saw like a yeah, uh, like sales chart thing. And it was. Yeah. They're good at it. They're just not, they can't feel the stadium. Team they, is dead. Nobody wants to put the G on their head, man. Uh-uh. Hey, that's pretty sick G they got, though. It is. It is cool. And those bridges are sweet. They with are. With the Guardians, the Guardians on the bridges. Are, yeah. People love Chief Wahoo. Yeah. That's what it sounds like in Cleveland. Yeah. They time. really do. Big time. There's a lot of trash on those bridges, too. Yeah, but all right. Every, every city. <laughs> well, There's a reason for that. I mean, we came there at the last day before the street sweeper was to schedule to come, obviously. <laughs> yeah. But Cleveland Browns fans, this run of their life has to be so fucking, you know, I don't want to say miserable. What run, though? What run? How, they how had many a team, years are you going back? Had a team. Had a team. You know, had, like, relevancy. And then, boom, they sell. They're out of town. They yeah. go to Baltimore. They don't even have a team anymore. Yeah. Oh, and they win the Super Bowl. And they, yeah, and they yeah. win the Super Bowl. Dance in your face. But blue-collar town, Cleveland, like, lived and died. Dog Pound was there every single day. Why'd they sell the team originally? Just Art want- Modell, the owner. 
just wanted to move? I, it was probably stadium money related, obviously. City in general. But they had to sell out, right? I remember like Pittsburgh News would obviously show Cleveland fans. And I assume Cleveland fans would show Pittsburgh news. And the reporters would read teleprompters in each of the cities and say the other city was the most disgusting city to ever exist. Look at these pigs. And then they show them. And it's like, well, I feel like they have a passionate fan base. Why'd they leave? Was it people weren't showing up to games? It's all Art Modell. I I remember what year did they move out? Do we know? 96 or something? Yeah. Because. Yeah. Yeah. Ray Lewis was the first draft pick, right, for the Ravens that year whenever he came in. So, like, yeah, 96. 95, 96. Think about that happening now. Just Well, I guess it does happen. But. Well, yeah, Rams just left, and, you yeah. know, that, that mm-hmm. settled, obviously. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's okay with it. The yeah. XFL, the Rock's like, ah, we'll, we will continue to put a team in that city. They are very pissed that they don't have a team anymore. But I guess the Rams would be a great – because they continue to show up even when those teams weren't great, right, Rams fans? Yeah, I mean, the Chargers taking off as well. Well, they didn't. Yeah, but they felt like they They're had no fans. stadium, and they weren't really selling out then. Were they still? I don't know. I don't know. Well, they didn't sell out in that temporary stadium that they No, had. they did not. That was in the move, though, to L.A. when yeah. they pissed off all their fans yeah. in San Diego. And their San Diego fans said, we're not going Other there. teams were selling it out. Yeah, it was yeah. away games for yeah. the Specifically Chargers. Pittsburgh. And the Eagles. The one, yeah, a yeah, lot Packers of Packers, too. Was it? it was that MLS stadium they played yeah, in. Yeah, stuff up. Like 40,000 people, right? <laughs> no, it was like 15,000. 20? 20, 20, 20, maybe, 20? yeah. Remember, it was that real small. a good atmosphere if it was jammed, though, wasn't it? It was all the away teams fans. Remember? Yeah. Vacation, yeah. Oh, let's go in some nice weather, guys. Yeah. Oh, we go to L.A. These tickets are pretty cheap. Yeah. Look at how in, we're on the field. What, <laughs> is this a different stadium? Yeah, it's a soccer stadium. Oh, okay. 27,000. 27,000, yeah. That was the thing. 16 away games. Because I just automatically assume if a team moves out of a city, it's because they can't make any money there, and they feel like their fans are out, but it's obviously tax things. Tax. The owner owner wants a new stadium. They won't, uh, they won't green light them on you know putting a new tax in to give you – Eight hundred million dollars in tax money to help with the new state. What's the new city that's going to be teased? San Antonio. San Potentially, Antonio, yeah. Is that the new city that's going to be teased? Because I do recall some places were in the middle of conversations with the state local authorities about getting a tax to publicly fund a new stadium. And I see the upside of having a stadium in a new stadium. You get the Super Bowl, and that's like billions of dollars of business coming to your city. But they always threaten to go to a town, right? And L.A. was that town. L.A. was for a long time. It was like. We'll go to L.A. right now. You don't think the second largest city in America doesn't fucking want a team right now? We'll go there right now. And then, boom, it ends up on the voting thing, and then it gets passed. That, like, happened in a lot of places, I think. What is it now? San Antonio? London? Yeah, definitely San Antonio. Do you think they would ever do a team in, like, Alabama or something, though? Just because that is no, a no. I don't think so. College Wasn't football. Austin in there? The Bills were going to go to Austin, or was that not really? a thing? Yeah, that was oh, the yeah. Bills stadium. When they were yep. up for sale. No, I think the Bills were up for sale, weren't they? Uh, I didn't think they were up for sale. I just thought that they weren't going to get the money to redo their stadium. The Ralph or whatever? New York, yeah. So they were threatening to just say, okay, fuck it. We'll go to Austin. By the way, Austin feels like a city that would, right? NFL team. San Antonio. With all the people moving there, too? Yeah, Yeah. and that's like something to do almost Mm -hmm. because Austin's the new L.A. or whatever. Mm -hmm. San San Antonio is the seventh largest city in the U.S. and It does not have a football team. So that would be the... And their fans, there's big sports fans, right? Because the Spurs or everything like that. Aren't they doing one? They could play in that arena, too. Or that stadium indoor deal. Which one? I don't know. I played in the Alamo Bowl there. The Alamo Dome. The Alamo Dome. Do you remember it? Oh, yeah, I remember. Played Oklahoma State, but uh, they would (laughs) obviously want a new stadium if you played there. Could Columbus do it or no because Ohio State? They could, but I mean, yeah. Three teams be, in Ohio? It's not going to happen. Well, I don't know if they're going to put three teams in Ohio. No offense, Ohio. I mean, Ohio. Why would, how would they? Already, Ohio yeah, people are already it. Ohio State fans. Yeah, Ohio State gets it. Ohio, they, they wouldn't be able to pluck. If NFL fans, they're already Cincy and Cleveland fans, I'd sure. assume. Yeah. They, that would have to be a lot of – if Ohio picked up a third NFL team – that would be amazing. Mm-hmm. That, that would be one of the most impressive acts of Ohio in history. I feel like it would be more likely if the Bears are moving out of Chicago that they put another team in Chicago. Yeah. It would be warm weather, you think, though? Probably Whatever f- the money is, that's where they'll go. Yeah, you're right. What but if, a four-season, you can't put a Super Bowl. Uh, maybe. If they know. put another team Retractable in Chicago, roof. they still want to yeah, redo the this, stadium maybe. and do something else. Hold on, what did the yeah. mayor of Dallas came out and said, right? You can give us another team. Another yeah. team in Arlington. Yeah, give us that another guy, team. Yeah. We, haven't, we haven't heard from him ever. since then. Yeah. Has the Dallas mayor made a single ruling since saying, hey, we can get another NFL team in Dallas? No. Jerry Jones made him a speed do, bump do. in front of a water burger. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can't, can't do Please everything. I just that cannot happen. What just, those were all said in jest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus. 
Thank God we're doing what we're about to do. Ladies and gentlemen, last week we debuted a new segment that really made us a professional operation. Yeah. It gave us a reason to dive deeper into the football conversation than we had ever dove before. Ladies and gentlemen, it is for the second install time for the second installment of Feel the Beat. Yeah. AJ! AJ, you feeling it? Feeling it. I, I'm feeling it. I think our first guest is good for this, too. He, yeah. he brings a lot of juice. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Not only does he bring a lot of juice, and he's the, uh, also the host of the most powerful ranking show in the history of ranking show. Yep. He is a beat writer and follower of the Los Angeles Chargers because he is the play-by-play -play guy for the Chargers. So he's on the beat every single day. Oh, yeah. Live from training camp, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Money Smith. Yeah. Feel the beat. I'm feel feeling the beat. Yeah. Feeling the beat. Hell we got yeah. special teams going on behind us right now, Pat. Hopefully, I don't show you anything that I'm not supposed to show you, and I get pee pee whacked by my employer. So uh, I may have to get a little closer to make sure that we don't show you anything you're not supposed to see. What's up, AJ? L listen, uh, AJ's going to bring up the same thing I'm going to bring up. If Telesco walks by and dong taps you, I would be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that'd be the best field of beat of all time. Yeah, by far. Oh, stop money. Stop showing them punt period. Pal. What is it? Is it punt period? Field goal period? What is it? Yeah, they just finished field goals. Uh, they're on punts right now. And uh, Pat, I, I I was talking to Tom a little bit earlier, and uh, he had shared with me a letter that uh, that you received from him in the front office because you had happened to miss practice on a particular Wednesday. Yeah. And uh, I October said, if 20th. you can track that letter down, yeah. I would love to do a dramatic reading okay. of that letter yeah, at perfect. some point when I come back on. Perfect. October 21st, 2010, I believe, is the day you're talking about. <laughs> they wouldn't let me out of the jail cell soon enough to make the practice. I did make it halfway through. I was sent immediately off. Uh, Tom Telesco, absolute legend, dude. Absolute legend. But it feels like they're really building a monster. Now, no playoff appearances yet for Herbert. Second year with Staley. The vibes have to be incredibly high. The AFC West is a nightmare, but this team's ready to fucking go, aren't they, Money? And it, does it feel like that on the grounds over there? Yeah, no doubt, Pat. I mean, it, look, look it, uh, there's juice. There's just juice when you walk out and you see 52 and 97, you know, kind of working on pass rush together with Khalil and Joey. They've hit it off. We were talking to Khalil a couple days ago, uh, Joey the day before, and they both said the same thing. They were like, look, this is great. I mean, uh, Khalil said, look, Joey doesn't hold anything back. We're sharing everything. We're watching film. He's like, yeah, we just sat together for about 45 minutes, watched his little brother. Uh, those guys are professional pass rushers, and that is what they care about most. And they've really been leaning on one another. To see the battles between J.C. Jackson and Mike Williams, just the one-on-ones. Oh, look, it's, it's the first week of practice, right? Like, that stuff is fun. We did not have that last year. I thought their defensive coordinator, Ronaldo Hill, put it best. He's like, look, we had guys last year that weren't looking over their shoulder. They knew those jobs were theirs. He goes, and fair or not, you know, did that contribute to the performance of the defense last year? Maybe. Did this year we got guys that were starters last year? They may not make the team. Like, oh. they may not make the guys wow. that are making Sorry money, about guys it. that are high Ooh. draft picks. Yeah, so look at that. Here we go. Pee -pee whack coming. Be careful. There's some uh, uh, is that, It's <laughs> blurry. We can't see anything. But if they're running any fakes <laughs> this early in camp, they deserve for everybody to know <laughs> what fakes they're running. Uh, go ahead, AJ. Money, what's it What's it feel like? What's the vibe feel like? I would imagine with all that competition, it seems like it's a pretty intense situation. Are they banging pretty good? I'll tell you what it feels like, AJ. It feels like I need to do more shoulder and tries because I'm holding this phone straight out from my face and my arm's starting to shake. That's nice. what it feels like. Nice. Beyond you know, that. can bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> a shake weight. There we go. There we go. I'll do that. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, especially on defense, AJ, it just it feels – different it feels different for these guys um having van noy out there man that's been really cool to see he's been working a lot inside and just listening to him and, and sort of eavesdropping with him and will hoyt the linebackers coach and what they're talking about and how he's trying to get assimilated as soon as possible there's just kind of that that sort of juice staley i mean i don't know you guys tell me uh, i'm a guy that's built like a 16 year old girl that never played football so what the hell do i know but like it feels like staley and this staff they like teaching like they're not it feels like there's a difference between coaching and teaching and just kind of watching them work with the like sixth round pick, uh, Dean Leonard, the corner, work with Jasir Taylor, who's been playing a lot of slot. It just feels like they're really invested in a lot of these guys and they know they're going to need depth because, look, that's what happened last year. One and three to finish the final quarter of the season. They win that Thursday night game against Kansas City. They're in first place in the division. They sweep the Chiefs. They lose that game. Then they lose two of their next three. They miss the playoffs. And I think so much of that was depth and so much of that was secondary depth. They feel like they got that now. Okay, let's talk about the offense side of the ball. Justin Herbert, everybody knows and thinks is going to be 
uh, icon in the NFL whenever it's all said and done. Any leaps and bounds for him and anything both on the field and maybe personality-wise as he enters his third year as an NFL starter here? Yeah, the way he described it and, and Joe Lombardi described it was it's it's instead of 101, it's 202. You know, he is coming in. And I remember when Drew Brees was in camp last year when Joe Lombardi was hired, you know, to be part of Coach Staley's staff. He said, look, imagine, uh, and I think for a lot of us white trash, we think about fine dining. And Cheesecake Factory comes to mind. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, we'll mini that corn dough. <laughs> Put them on a stick. <laughs> oh. Chicken fried chicken. Uh, and he said, this is a giant menu. And the more comfortable you get, the more you can order. And uh, he said in, in Herbert's first year, it's going to be a little overwhelming. He's going to find the things that he likes. And, and Coach Lombardi, they're going to they're gonna kind of accent that and just kind of hammer those things home. Um, now Herbert's like, dude, I'm coming in. I don't have to learn the system. I know it. I'm searching for things that, that I now know that I'm more comfortable with. Hey, let's try this now. Let's try that now. It's no more just kind of base level. Let's see if we can figure this out. It's the next step. And I think that goes for receivers too. We were talking to Keenan and Mike Williams and all that's those right. guys. And they just said, yeah, you know, oh, it's, it's year two for us as well. Right. That's right. Yeah, hey, that's right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so I think for everybody on the team and even Eckler was talking about that. He's like, look, man, I feel so much more comfortable with all the option routes and the checks. Now this second year, I feel like there's a lot more that I can do in this offense than I did last year. Game's going to slow down for Justin Herbert and the boys. I'm excited to see what they can do. That AFC West is a monster, uh -oh. though. Go ahead, your corner. Yeah, Money, what has uh, Pat White been doing with the offense? Yes. Is he working with Herbert? Or yeah. With yeah, my guy. Love him. Yeah, I, uh, I asked Tom Telesco about that, kind of, and, uh, and Pat, and, and Tom said, look, I just, I needed to get uh, another connection to, to Pat McAfee. I was like, that's the easiest way for me to, to get the, one of the greatest I mean, yeah. you want to talk about one of the most fun college teams to ever watch in the history of Rich Rod running the show with you out there punting around and shaking your junk in everybody's yeah, face yeah, and freaking yeah. Pat and Slayton. Yeah, God, this guy's great. That was part of uh, Pat is... <laughs> I should have been part of That's what you're supposed to do. It's <laughs> I should have hindsight. I should have been. Morgan, I mean, those were, those were mistakes <laughs> that were made. Mistakes were made. Listen, I should have focused you know what? a little bit. They're mistakes we learn from, Pat. And uh, that's the most important I thing. Do. We all make mistakes. Yes. So that letter. Yeah, yeah. Tom yeah. 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 yeah, missed that missed that practice on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like Rod Ripple, it'll get the best of you. Yeah, but really um, get out, but yeah. so. <laughs> hey, they're kicking uh, off right now. Point, yeah. Tom, he's a, <laughs> Anyways. He's, uh, he's he's working with everyone. He is and it's great to see him out here. A freaking college football legend, just like the man, just like the men. That are sandwiched. I am the meat. I am like that budding white no, trash. No. Hell yeah. No, 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 no. Giant <laughs> slices of football bread right what? now. No, this is He's one big white trash there. sandwich. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> one particular side of the bun is like a good middle piece of bread, mm -hmm. and then the other is right. the butt end. But, <laughs> oh. Yes, uh, Pat. How's Pat look? Is he throwing it all? Is he doing anything? Does he look good? He's just kind of kicking it uh, through these first couple of weeks. He's just been kicking it. And I think observing, he's kind of got that post that is, and, you know, it's, it's the Bill Walsh sort of, hey, we're going to bring you in. You're going to be in every meeting. You're going to be around whomever you want. Um, and we're just going to kind of help you get on this path to football coaching. So he's kind of been everywhere. Um, and it looks like these first couple of weeks, he's really just kind of been absorbing everything that's around him. He's going to start working out again. There's yeah. going to yeah. be some shows on those fucking practice fields, I think, for Pat. I'm so happy for him and thankful for Tom. Last question here from Ty. Money, we've seen a bunch of pictures with a shitload of fans uh, at practice. Yeah. Like, is that kind of surprising? I think it was, especially with the Rams winning the Super Bowl last year and them kind of being the more popular team out there. Do you get the sense that the expectation is that the Chargers should win this division this year despite how good it is? Yeah, Ty, you know what I think it is? It's, um, I think it just goes to show you why quarterbacks uh, are so sought after, why you're so desperate to get it right, and why you pay them so much money when you get one. To me, that's totally the Herbert effect. Uh, I think you get out here and you see the second he steps on the field, when he begins, and he approaches, there's no fans here today, but when they are, he always takes time to go out there and give them 10, 15 minutes of signing autographs with the kids. Like, I think that's sort of what this is. I think there's expectations. People are excited. It's a fun brand of football when you think about what the offense looks like, all the explosive say, plays. We're going. Um, yeah. <laughs> is that right? We're going. We're going People fun. love it. Yeah. And uh, and they have a superstar quarterback. And, like, just to your first point about what's it, how surprised am I, uh, very. Because it really happened these last two years. 
You know, I started seeing people walk around the stadium last year. It'd be like mom and dad. I mean, you guys know what football allegiances are like. So mom and dad are in their Browns jersey, and and baby boy is now wearing a Herbert jersey. Yeah, and I started yeah. Seeing more and more of that. So this year, dude, the first practice it was on a on a Wednesday, and there were I was talking to security when they came to open it up at three forty five. They said there were like thirty people lined up at three forty five a.m. Here we go! Wow. So Boat you know, they had to. Exactly. Yeah. They had to cap it every day right. at uh, seventy five. Like so yeah, it feels. We, it or, feels a little bit different than the command. <laughs> <laughs> they, they command. Hey, we appreciate you, Matt. Thank you so much for calling. We can't wait to chat with you again, sir. Love you guys. Hey, you too. Tell everybody we said hello, ladies and gentlemen. Matt Money Smith. He's live at Chargers Cam. Now it's the time to continue to. Hey, let's feel the beat, Woo! AJ. Let's feel the beat. Hell yeah. From one beat reporter to another, ladies and gentlemen, let's go up to uh, Buffalo, New York. Okay. okay. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Bill's Beat and Sideline reporter, host of the Extra Point Show uh, from 10 to noon on WGR 550. Ladies and gentlemen, Sal Capaccio. Sal, what's going on, Paisan? Hey, what's up, guys? What, what are you, British? Capaccio? It's Capaccio, baby. Let's go. Here yeah. you go man. All right. Hey, well, Capaccio, it's great <laughs> to see you, man. You look fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Buffalo Bills camp. Obviously, Micah Hyde and Poyer both getting injured. Poyer comes out. Uh, Hyper-extended elbow. He might miss a couple weeks. He'll be back in time. Are the injuries an issue, or is everything, this is just status quo for normal training camp up there in Buffalo, Sal? A little more than what you want, of course, right? You don't want to see your two all-pro safeties on the shelf at all. But look, Micah Hyde came back to practice, did individual work a little bit. He's going to be fine. We know Jordan Poyer's a tough dude. He's probably going to do something maybe to resemble, you know, I don't know, boxing or MMA when he's done. He's such a really tough guy, and, you know, he's going to be back out there at some point. But look, here's the thing about the Bills roster. It is so good and loaded, but yet... All the back-end guys, they don't get a lot of opportunity because guys like Micah and Jordan play so much. So Jaquan Johnson, Damar Hamlin, Josh Thomas, this is opportunity for them, and it really is. People don't know Jaquan Johnson's in his fourth year already in Buffalo because he's behind two All-Pros and he never plays. So these guys will get opportunity. They're going to be okay. Okay. So what's it like up there like managing expectations? A lot of people are picking the Bills to win the Super Bowl. Like, is there a different feel there at camp than it has been before? No, I don't think there's a different feel as far as when you go to camp. Look, Sean McDermott runs – the same kind of ship every day. That's the thing about him. He's Mr. C, Mr. Consistency. You go back to 2017, how he came in. People thought they were tanking, trading Sammy Watkins, Ron Darby. But you know what? They had a program in place. It was consistency every day. You can't tell a difference, guys, between a practice now and a practice then. But the fans certainly know it. You can't get a ticket to training camp. They're free, but it's all sold out every single day. The expectations. Everyone's a superstar on this team. I mean, I covered this team. I grew up watching this team going through the Super Bowl years and the drought. You might get after the Kelly and Thurman era, you might get a guy here, a guy there that's a superstar, a T.O. here and there. But now it's Josh Allen, what? Stephon Diggs, I, Von Miller. It's I, incredible what's happened here. Yeah, it's an absolute loaded roster, but they still feel like they have a chip on the shoulder. Was it no pro bowlers on the defense oh last God. year? And now they're the Super Bowl favorites. Uh, let's talk about that prototype quarterback you have in Josh Allen. The patience that Bean and McDermott showed and also the unwavering confidence in him growing and developing as a quarterback has certainly paid off into him being a guy. He's getting in the fights. He's getting knocked down. Oh. Sal, what the fuck? That's Josh <laughs> Allen, Sal. Is, is, yeah. that, is that just Josh's way of going about things? Are those types of squirmishes normal in uh, McDermott's camp? Or is that just first day of pads? We're running goal line in our six foot six, 240, multiple hundred million dollar quarterbacks running ISOs for some reason. Is that just uh, status quo up there? No, listen, we don't want to see Josh Allen doing that. Nobody wants to see Josh Allen doing that, but it's football. Let me give you some context, though. That was the first day of pads. It was about after two hours. It was literally the last play on a hot day in the first day of pads. I'm sure Josh and everybody kind of was, was a little bit riled up. They wanted, to get out. they wanted to get out of there a little bit. You know, look, he went through the hole. Jordan Phillips did nothing wrong. He was squeezing the hole down a little bit. Gave him a little bump right around the whistle. Josh didn't like it. And the one guy on offense that can look Jordan Phillips in the eye is Josh Allen. So <laughs> put his hands on him up top. Little skirmish happened. Look, I think this happens in football, but I'm quite sure that Brandon Bean, Sean McDermott basically said, holy shit, what's happening? Our million dollar quarterback is, you know, a half a million, half a billion dollar quarterbacks getting into some fights here. But look, guys, the next day they were joking around. That's Josh Allen. He is an alpha male. He is a leader. He has such respect from that locker room. You know, you guys know where he came from and all the questions about him and what you said, Pat, is right. They've really built 
a quarterback here in Buffalo. They've surrounded him with the right people. The organization knows how to do that, and we've seen it now on multiple levels, not just a QB, and Josh obviously has been rewarded. No day ball. that going to be a problem? You know, it can be. I think that's the biggest question, actually. Like, what's going to happen? Ken Dorsey, first-time play caller. How will Josh Allen and the offense kind of adjust to that? But here's how smart Sean McDermott is. He surrounded his first, his first time play caller, Ken Dorsey, with Aaron Cromer, who's been an interim head coach and an OC, with Joe Brady, who's been an OC and a play caller. They obviously have Rob Boris on staff. He's been an OC. They have Kelly Skipper on staff. They brought in Mike Shula. Ken Dorsey has a plethora of people to lean on whenever a situation comes about. And look, he Sal. had Josh Allen's recommendation. Sal. Sal. You got two quarterbacks. You got no quarterback. Mm. <laughs> you got ten OCs. You got no OCs. Is that is that is that this is all by design, like to help out Dorsey, or is this McDermott being like, hey, by the way, go ahead and fuck around. We got bang, bang, yeah. bang, bang. Is that clearly defined? Do you think? No, I, I think it's clearly defined. Sean doesn't want to do that. There's no way. I think okay. Sean wants right. a clear lineage of who's had. Look, I'll, I'll go back to Sean's first two years. Sean was very self aware. He was a young coach. He was a first time coach, and I think that first year, maybe the second year. He had the oldest and most veteran coaching staff in the league. Juan Castillo was on the staff. I mean, you had guys have been coaching for 40 years in the NFL on his staff. He did Got that it. because he wanted to have guys around him to insulate just in case something were to go wrong, he could lean on. But look, guys, this is Ken Dorsey's offense. But the proof's in the pudding. There's difference between, hey, we're doing it in training camp than when live bullets start in oh, yeah. real games, and you got to get in and out of the huddle and make those play calls and make sure you have everything buttoned up. How much has uh, Vaughn Miller been doing so far through camp? He's just a regular player. The Bills have a rotation on the defensive line. They've had that for years. The question isn't going to be in camp, which is a good question, what he's doing, which is everything. The question will be, will he be the exception to the rule? And I think he will. The Bills generally do not have a defensive lineman play more than 65% of snaps throughout a whole season. I mean, last year, I think Jerry Hughes led him with 58 or 59%. That's kind of normal for the Bills. Von Miller you got to get this damn guy in the field, right? I mean, I think the Bills know that. That's why they signed him to the big deal. I know he's 33. He's not there to be necessarily an every-down player, although he'll play, I think, plenty. He's there to be the closer. He's there to be in critical situations. He's there to make sure they have him ready to go when it comes crunch time, and maybe they have to get to Patrick Mahomes with 13 seconds left. Tom. Sal, uh, obviously we know Stephon Diggs is the guy there, but Gabe Davis scores four touchdowns against the Chiefs in the AFC uh, in the AFC playoffs last year. Is, can we expect more of that from the, some more of the role players or the second guys down the list? I think you can. I think Gabe Davis is going to fit well into that number two role. Look, I mean, this guy gained 17 pounds in the offseason, went from 210 to 227. He's thick upper body. He's a physical receiver. You see him body up some of these corners. They don't have a chance in training camp. Now, he doesn't have the top end speed, but guys, look at his yards per catch throughout his career. He's always made plays down the field. I think what you're going to see, though, Isaiah McKenzie. This has been the star of camp so far, guys. When he got his shot last year, remember, Here we he go. went off against the New England Patriots. Fast, right? Oh, yeah. Right? Absolutely. Fast, Slot fast. guy. The Patriots, you know, they, they, they didn't even, I don't know if they game plan for him. If Bel Belichick had his hubris of, whoa, it doesn't matter. We'll stop by Isaiah McKenzie. But basically, he's running down the field. They're like, there he goes. The Patriots secondary is like, there who goes? They didn't yeah. know. Isaiah yeah. McKenzie was making plays all over the place. And so. he's been doing it again. And Sean McDermott said, potentially a full-time role. I think he's going to do that. I think he's going to have that. And look, if I was a fantasy football player, which I am, I would keep Isaiah McKenzie on my radar for a lot of targets this year. You good? Are you a good fantasy football player? It sounds like you you love fantasy football, huh, Sal? I love it. I mean, I love playing it. It keeps me up my job. You know, who's doing what? And you know what? If, if I'm if I'm at the if I'm there at the end, it's great, and I'll kind of get into it a little bit more. But I try to just do my best at it. You know what? My job. I, I, I can learn about players, waiver wires, what's going on, and it's okay. Do you ever tell Bean, like, hey, I want to let you know, <laughs> my team, I drafted better than your team. Yeah, pretty Think good. You ever give him ideas or anything? Like, how's your I relationship? Haven't. Oh, listen, first of all, re relationship's great. Brandon is a terrific guy. I know he's been on your show. Yeah, he's great um, here. He's great on he's, our show, man. by the way. He's fucking He's great for Buffalo. He's also a great damn golfer. We were in a oh, golf yeah. tournament, like a media guys. event. All right. That's Played all Bean does is fucking golf. You yeah. draft, you draft, you draft uh, Josh Allen, you can just go fucking golf. Uh, That's right. Hey, we made the decision we need to make. Yeah. Every time we call Bean, he's got a polo on, mm -hmm. just he got does. a little bit of sun. Yep. He's great. He's unbelievable. Yeah. That son and of a bitch probably, better be scratch. Yeah. Is he scratch? Is that guy a scratch golfer? He's pretty close to it. He's probably out at Oak, Oak Hill today. I mean, after the walkthrough. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs>
<laughs> he gets enough advice from his kid on fantasy football from what he tells us. He doesn't need Sal Capaccio telling him what to do. Uh, last question here, Sal. We appreciate you. Go ahead, Ty Schmidt. Sal, you mentioned covering the team for such a long time now, and Josh Allen, when he first came in, you know, it was kind of like, the, oh, he has all the physical tools, but like, have, has it been very noticeable year over year, and then finally you get into this year, and it's like, oh, okay, this guy is, is pretty much bulletproof. Like, how much different does he feel almost this year than maybe he did last year or the year before? Yeah, I think this year the difference is when Josh makes a mistake in camp, you're like, okay, who cares? It's Josh Allen. We know what he's going to do. Over the last several years, maybe not as much last year, but, oh, my God, interception, Mr. Inaccurate QB. What does that mean? You know, do you have to worry about this guy? Look, we know who Josh Allen is. He's not only an elite quarterback. He is a superstar off the field. Um, he's already put himself in the upper echelon of, of quarterbacks. And if anybody at this point doesn't believe that, then basically they're just trying to prove them themselves right when they were wrong they're just being stubborn or ignorant and don't know anything about football hey a lot of people are stubborn and ignorant and know next to nothing about football <laughs> but we're happy that you are not one of those people thank you so much for joining us Paisan. anytime guys it was an honor to be on your show and i hope we can do it again hey by the way great work digital I, yeah. like you put a tweet out um about coming on the show the action on it was very real sal you're beloved by bill's mafia man that's not easy to do well, listen, I got to tell you something. That, that's two things, all right? Number one, I grew up here. Like, I know what these people have been through. I'm one of them. I'm a Buffalonian. I, was, I, I went through the drought. I was taking a Greyhound bus from Syracuse University as a Port College student during the Super Bowl years back to the stadium as a season ticket holder. But number two, Pat... I'm just not an asshole. You don't have to be an asshole, right? Just be nice to people. That's what I am. Well, we appreciate you being nice to our show. You're incredible, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Sal Kaposhi. Yes, Thank you, Paisan. Uh, I'll tell you what, Sal was fucking great. Yeah. That's, that sign over his shoulder that just has a buffalo. It just says <laughs> Sal underneath. It was awesome. Yeah. How about him in a power stance? Yeah. Yeah. Time? Energy was up. Any question that came, he was ready and ready. Thank you, Sal, so much for being a part of, you know, the second installment that is only getting better as the time goes on. Let's continue to feel the beat. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you feeling it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bopping around the league. Yeah, we are just bopping around the league. <laughs> hey, let's feel the beat it around the league. Let's bop from team to team. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us from the Packers on the beat, writer for The Athletic. Ladies and gentlemen, Match Nine Man. Yay! What's up, dude? What's up? Thanks for having me. Hey, is this your first time on the show? Actually, I was going to bring that up. It's my second, okay. but you had me on after a Thursday night game in 2019. Okay. I was listening to the show right before I came on, and you said, why are we having a beat writer on? Well, so yeah. that humbled me a little bit. Sounds I, about right. Yeah. <laughs> but to be clear, Schneidman, people in the office say, we created this entire segment just to have you on. Uh -huh. That's what no. we did, just to, so we can make a reason, because we remembered in 2019, mm -hmm. we love the conversation. And you heard how my brain operates. Why would we ever have a beat writer on? <laughs> so we had to create a segment uh -huh. of beat writers just to get you back on. We appreciate you joining us. You went to Syracuse? Is that a Syracuse S, or what is that? I did, yeah. I was. Good. I would have worn something different, but we had a, a Brian Gutekunst press conference real early this morning. It was raining, so I put this on. So I apologize, you had to have two Syracuse guys on in a row, but what are we going to do? Well, unlike, was Sal the Syracuse guy or Matt Money Smith? Sal. Yeah, so unlike, well, he told us there at the end, I was at Syracuse, mm -hmm. I took the bus over. He didn't just shove it in no. our face. No, he didn't. <laughs> no. That's normally what Syracuse people do. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Because yeah. Syracuse Broadcasting uh, School. Oh, like my God. Oh, yeah. here we go. Uh, Harvard, you know, Harvard everybody Broadcasting. Is there, and you're going, it's like uh -huh. vegans, right? Sure. Crossfitters. Yeah. yeah. People that go to Syracuse for Broadcasting yep, School. Right there. You're going fucking know. Hope you like oranges. That's why Sal's got 139,000 followers. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole thing. He's a Syracuse guy. Schme Schneidman, I want to let you know. It makes sense you went to Syracuse because Syracuse has a great broadcasting journalism school. And you do fantastic work, sir. We actually follow along oh, yeah. week to week with everything you do, and we appreciate you. Thank you for joining us yet again. Syracuse Orange grad, Matt Schneidman, wow. writer for The Athletic, uh, follows the pack. Obviously, brand new set of weapons, right? I mean, Lazard's there. Uh, Tunyon's still there. There's still familiar names, but without the number one in Devontae, everybody's wondering what Aaron's going to do, how Aaron's going to feel. It looks like from the videos, Aaron's very comfortable, very confident, and excited to work with new guys. Is that what it's like, boots on the ground, and how has camp been for the offensive side of the ball? Definitely. I mean, he won't say this publicly. In fact, he refuted it publicly, but AJ, 
and Pat, you all know him probably better than I do, definitely better than I do. I think he, he sees this year as a challenge. Part of him wants to prove that he's the bad man Aaron Rodgers. He can get the most out of these guys without Devontae Adams. And think about this. Devontae Adams has missed seven games since Matt LaFleur became head coach in 2019. The Packers are 7-0 and in those games. And Aaron Rodgers has averaged about 293 passing yards, a little less than three touchdowns per game in those games with only one interception in all seven games. So, listen, he's the guy that can make it work. You remember when they went to undefeated Arizona on a Thursday night last year without Lazard, MVS, and Devontae, and they won 24-21. It's a defense. It's a running game. It's a formula that's knocked them out of the playoffs two out of the last three years with the 49ers with a pedestrian passing game. Why can't it work here in Green Bay? Uh Matt, why is uh, the head coach, Matt LaFleur, physically assaulting Jugs machines up there? What happened? <laughs> That's honestly the most angry I've seen him get since they had 10 guys on the field to defend Robbie Gould's game-winning field goal in the playoffs. Uh, he, he was legitimately angry. And a couple, a couple of us watching practice were like, this has to be on purpose. You know, Rich Bisacci is a crazy guy. He's probably doing some different things, making the punt returners come up and catch it. No, he said that judge, Jugs machine sucked. I will pay any price for a new one. He was really angry. So, you guys got half ass shit up yeah, there. What the hell's going on? What's going on? I see I there's a judge. Ah. What's that, AJ? There. I didn't see this video that you're referring to. LaFleur was absolutely flustered, actually upset about what was going on there. No, Matt knows. Yeah, whatever. It wouldn't turn over, right? They couldn't get the Jugs machine to turn over, so it was messing up their whole punt situation. Oh, uh, so the they were trying to do a punt return drill, and the punt return drill, by the way, is set off the timing of the punt and the ball being caught, and it couldn't get on the field because of how windy it was. Probably not able to blow, uh, turn the ball over and control it. No, it had nothing to do with the wind. The Jugs machine was just that fucked up. Oh, can't, can't have, have it. it. Can't have can't it. Can't have it. What are we doing? Oh, we don't got number one wide receiver. We don't oh, got jugs no. machines. Don't Packers love that. Shit. We're making two hundred million off the field every single year just from people buying tickets and stuff. Figure it out. Figure it out. Yeah, yeah, shit, you know? Did Gunter Kunz talk about this this morning in his early morning presser? Like, yeah, we, we all figured some stuff out <laughs> when it comes equipment-wise. Or what did Goody talk about this morning? Just standard roster update. What is really the conversation happening in Green Bay right now? Yeah, I think the biggest storyline, which he talked about when he talked to us a week ago, is David Bakhtiari's left knee. This is a guy who made an all-pro team every single year from 2016 to 2020, and then tore his ACL in a freak accident in practice, as you guys know, on New Year's Eve 2020, preparing for a game against the Bears to lock up the one seed. It's over 19 months since that day, and he's still not practicing. He told us last week it's not even the ACL anymore. It's like collateral damage from that. The ACL's been healed for over a year. They're not going to put a timetable on his return. But right now, they're trotting out Yash Nyman, who did well for them at left tackle last year. And then Zach Tom, a rookie fourth-round pick from Wake Forest at right tackle. Because Elton Jenkins and Bakhtiari, which was the starting left side of the Pro Bowl NFC line in 2020, Jogs machines. <laughs> are both rehab major knee injuries. So if you've got a 38-year-old quarterback who can still scoot around a little bit, but a not as bit. much as maybe yeah. he used to, you got to keep him upright. And you need your two best offensive linemen back. That's the biggest story here this camp. Put it on the ticker. Matt Steinman thinks Aaron Rodgers can't run anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, hey, sorry about it, Matt. Good luck. Good luck. You're going to do great at practice. I'm sure Aaron won't see it. Go ahead, Ty. <laughs> Matt, for maybe the first time in my lifetime, uh, the people are talking kind of more about the defense. I mean, we all know what Rodgers can do, and we kind of expect the offense to figure it out. Maybe not right away, but by the end of the season, they'll be you know a well-oiled machine. But how does the defense look so far? And you know, are people right to be kind of more excited maybe about the prospects of the defense this year than in years past absolutely i mean rogers started off camp basically by said it well he said it on with you guys i shouldn't even say to start camp uh he said it with you guys the offense might struggle a little bit because we are a defensive team and that's really been the case i know on day one he said 1-0 to the offense and, and said the defense are a bunch of chumps but pretty much every day since then it's been defense you, there's really no weaknesses going from Jair Alexander, who you could make a case is a top three corner in the league, highest paid at his position in NFL history. He's back healthy. Mountaineer Rasul Douglas, Eric Stokes. Dog. Good safety combo. Rasul Douglas. <laughs> what? Yeah. Sorry about First all-pro inside linebacker in Devondre Campbell. Then you have Kenny Clark, Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith on the D-line. This could be a defensive team for, I don't know, Ty. Is it first time in Aaron Rodgers' career? I know the 2010 defense was really good, but... Obviously, always on that. 
Hyman. AJ Dunk it on AJ. <laughs> Dunk it on AJ. <laughs> no, Dunk it on AJ. Yeah. He can scoot a little, a little, little bit. bit. Yikes. You're the best, Steinman. Uh, we're talking to Matt Steinman, working for The Athletic, covering the pack. Also host of the Head of the Pack podcast. Oh, oh yeah. That's right. Head of the Pack. Is, 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 uh, are you the only host or is there co host No, Bill Huber, who covers the team for Sports Illustrated up here, is my co-host. We so like heads. Our coverage is that. <laughs> oh, your coverage is Head of the Pack. Got it. Love okay. That. So it's not you. It's your coverage. Correct. Yes. That's on us. We're in the middle oh. of the field of beat right now. We're yeah. feeling it out. Mm -hmm. uh, Connor, last question here from Matt Steinman, Syracuse grad. Yeah, Matt, you mentioned the defense and obviously the rookie right tackle on offense. Is there a sense around the building that they are going to lean on some rookies, whether it be wide receiver? Uh, I believe they have a rookie D lineman, Wyatt, and mm -hmm. uh, one other one who plays middle linebacker. Wow. Yeah, are they going to lean on those guys this season, or is it prim primarily going to be the uh, vets from the last few years? I mean, you'll see your heavy dose of the Randall Cobbs, Alan Lazards, but the player of camp so far on the offensive side of the ball has been Romeo Dobbs. Who's dog. The four, he's an absolute dog. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Fourth receiver yeah, from the Nevada. Syracuse had that. <laughs> had over 2,100 receiving yards and 20 touchdown catches the last two years. We were just talking to Rodgers in the locker room a couple minutes ago, and he said what he's doing in camp is very rare for a rookie. And you guys know Aaron Rodgers does, doesn't just throw around praise like that Agreed. willy -nilly. Like, if he see, he, he'll tell it how it is. Romeo Dobbs is making a push to get some serious reps beginning of the season. So we'll see. I, I think him, Zach Tom, the rookie offensive tackle, and Quay Walker, who's the middle linebacker from Georgia, they drafted with a 22nd pick. He's been running with the ones all camp. Rookies don't really contribute that much around here normally, especially at receiver. I think this year could be different. Well, Matt Schneiman, we appreciate your contribution to our show and Feel the Beat. That's Matt Schneiman from The Athletic. Hey! Covering the pack. Thank you, Matt. Great appearance. Hour three will be on the other side of this 10-minute break on Sirius XM. We shall see you then. Fucking hell yeah. Nailed it. Boom. Jeez, Had eight love. seconds. Schneidman was still giving his answer to the hard out. <laughs> yeah. Schneidman knew. He's a professional. He went to Syracuse. That's yeah. right. I didn't know he was going to dunk. Everybody went to Syracuse. Bro, why? Yeah. Why did he just assassinate you yeah. and Aaron? Win the same thing. What did he say? Well, he said, Aaron's never had a good defensive player on any of the team. You tell me, Ty. Yeah. Is this the uh, first time yeah. Aaron has ever had a good defensive player? He basically cocked back yeah. from the foul line, and you were just standing there. I'll take the charge. Ooh. And he whoo, yeah. and on. And Vince Carter over yeah. top of you. Yeah. Hold it. Like yeah. that guy. And then I, don't, yeah, I might not recover from that. You're right. Makes sense. I, we agree. Yeah. And then yeah. earlier, I don't know if you saw it, he actually went off the backboard with Aaron. A little bit of a, you know, Aaron's 38 years old, a little misdirection. He looks and then the ball goes out the backboard. He, he could still scoot a little, little bit. bit. Oh. Bang, right on. I'm like, oh, shit. Schneidman from Syracuse coming out guns a blazing. Let's yeah. go. Playing for Bayheim. Yeah, he is. Well. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's true. Bay, I'm guilty guy. But, Whoa, still, Jesus. but still, Jesus. what do you mean? Yes. What do you mean? Hey, Jake, I mean? Everybody's brain went to the same place. Okay, you didn't have to say it. Yeah, I, right? for, no, I didn't know that's where you guys' brains went to. I forgot until I said oh. that. Tom Diggs is mind blown right now. Yeah, In, I mean, I know inside that, voices are about to become outside. I know voices. that Brian Kelly did. I didn't know that. We were All right, break. let's get uh, let's get to a break here before hour three on the other side. We got Kyle Brandt joining us. He's uh, here. We go. He's announcing a show. Ooh. Kyle Brandt's basement. It's going to be good. Everything Kyle does as well. Yeah. Is that what it is? Okay. I saw he, he, he teased something. Yeah. So then Schefter scooped him. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Obviously. <laughs> Accumulation of events. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to ask him about it. Like, hey, did you know Schefter was going to scoop you on yeah. your own thing? Because he did an up to something, basically. Yeah. yeah. And then Schefter, like 20 <laughs> minutes later, was like, Mm, okay, not well, not actually, <laughs> boom. Gotcha. <laughs> and it's just out there. I don't know if there's a miscommunication or if that was the plan all along. Talking to Kyle Brandt, who we are big fans of. Huge. Uh -huh. Hosting Good Morning Football and also teaming up with Omaha, Peyton Manning's production company, for a new show called Kyle Brandt's Basement. We'll talk to him in the next hour. There's some breaking news going around the NFL. We'll talk about and some injuries that are going to affect the outcome of a lot of different teams. Hall of Fame games tomorrow, five-hour energy Woo. phone line calls, as well at one 3 4 We shall I'll see you in a bit. Joining us now is a man who got to experience that at Notre Dame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got to experience it in the NFL. Now he's on television. He's this man's brother-in-law. He's obviously incredibly handsome. Ladies and gentlemen, Brady Quinn. Yay! Holy hell. Oh, you look like that all the time. I, I don't know if you guys can see what's behind me. I think uh, AJ might be more familiar with this picture. 
So hope, hopefully AJ can elaborate or add some context to all this. Is that Chopper up over your left ear? <laughs> that's here? Chopper. Yeah, that's wow. Chopper. <laughs> AJ, what? How'd you get that in your background? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? He's so... Well, this is, yes. This is a golf cart submerged. <laughs> what? Why are you fully dressed underwater? Thank you, and Brady. Okay, okay. Brady, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, you gotta. I guess we have to mention it, Brady. This is Pat. You know, it, this golf cart, the e-brake just didn't work on me. I was parking close to the green. I rode that joker right into the pond because it took a hard right turn. This was like 12 years ago. I jumped in instantly. Oz is the other guy looking for his cigs. There was no help. And then Brady and Chopper were in my group. They came up about 10 seconds later. And they both just dove in instantly and started helping. Yeah. So um, you hold on. We Brady. did not finish our round. You. <laughs> <laughs> you drove this cart directly into this pond. Well, you mouth are mouth. a fucking mouth. menace Jeez. behind the wheel, AJ. You it drive with mouth. both feet, you sleep, your hands are all deformed because of your broken fingers. You're driving golf carts into ponds. Straight up, are you, how am, are you blacked out drunk in this thing? No, I wish I was, that's the problem. I was not. Sober! Oh my God, oh, this hey, guy. I was, I was trying to get there. Brady, how do you let this guy marry your sister? How do you let this guy marry your sister, Brady? Let me add some more context to all of this, okay? This is at Rattlesnake Ridge. This is the first year, our first fundraiser. Uh, for my foundation, the, the Third and Goal Foundation, yes. which helps support wounded vets. So Great AJ cause. was kind enough to come out yeah. and obviously support the cause. Now, I guarantee you he was not sober for this because we actually took a party bus to Rattlesnake Ridge. Oh, AJ, boozing so and driving. Oh. No one was sober at this thing. Oh, what I'm and, saying is I played many times with many more drinks in me and didn't wreck a cart, is all I'm saying. Oh, okay. Sure. All right. Chopper yeah. hopping in there, though. Is he a uh, scuba diver? Well, Chop hey, he Chopper. dove to the bottom and grabbed some clubs. <laughs> he did. He did. He said all you had to do was open your eyes in that murky water and you could find whatever you need to down there. All those eyes were burning afterwards. <laughs> hey, we're up to something big. Hey, we're up to something big, AJ. We are up to something. This is the coolest moment of the history of my existence. I think people are gonna be startled. It's a joke, and I can't thank everybody in the audience. I'm up to something. <laughs> oh! Today's a big time day. Let's go. Not only are we going back to Plum to do something cool, but today is the day that our heater horse has arrived for the Super yeah. You know, whenever you get a chance to give back to where you're from, especially a place that helped create me and mold me, I'm very, very lucky to do it. I'm lucky to be from here, and it seems like the only smart thing to do would be give back. Mm -hmm. What's going on, girl? It stinks here, huh? What's up, Kenny Wood, dude? Kenny Wood is named after Kenny's Woods. A man named Kenny owned the hill in the woody area. They turned it into an amusement park, which is a Yinzer stable. So Jeezy actually shots out this area we really currently. I think life can be much simpler whenever you just take care of your people, enjoy your life, and do your thing, and that's all we're trying to do. You know, growing old, slowly dying. How about you? How's everybody? <laughs> I'm gonna give a full lead up to how I got to where I'm at. I think I'm very lucky to be from here. If you're a kid that has walked through these halls, you understand something that not a lot of people do. I think Plum is a much different place than everyone else. And then there's Nick up there. Go look at Nick how pissed off he is. This past summer, I was driving through here because I was here for an event, and Angelo Bolino, a little blonde haired kid, was kicking on the same field that I used to kick on as a child. And he had like two balls and a holder. And I was watching him kick, and then he would go shag for himself, and then he would come back and kick. And the easy question is, if he had 10 balls, how much better could Angelo Bolino be? If I would have been able to have 10 balls, 15 balls, new cleats, new everything, chances to go to camps with my teammates and everything, what could have happened? So I said to myself, literally after meeting with Angelo, great season, by the way, dude. I said, if I ever get a chance, I'm going to try to take care of the potential humans and kids that were in my exact position in club. I'm gonna give 200,000 to the Plum Area Soccer. I'm gonna give 150,000 to the PMFA Youth Football. I'm gonna give 100,000 to the Baseball Youth. I'm gonna give 100,000 to the Lacrosse. And then we're gonna have two million in this fund that will just start. And hopefully it'll only go on from there. Sweet stuff for sports. Just anything to make everybody's 
you know, the teams and the players' lives easier, better. Trying to streamline the entire process of taking care of the athletes of Plum High School is uh, kind of what it's all about. Wow, dude, that was cool. All right, Marathi, like the Indy. You're going to have a lot of people that have never accomplished anything in their life tell you that what you're thinking about doing isn't possible. Just because they don't think they could accomplish it doesn't mean anything to you. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Hey, we're all Mustangs here. Let's go. What are you going to do to change and make Tua better? Have you gotten so, into that? This is very early in the whole process, yeah, and you're shaking no. hands, kissing babies right yeah. now, and you're a zero-win head yeah. coach that everybody loves. Zero wins. Zero <laughs> win. But what, what are you thinking about that for Tua? How do you make him better? Um, we're going to start with scoring more points than the opponent. Holy wow! Shit. Holy shit. Oh, no. Uh, you are changing the game. Changing the game. <laughs> yeah. Through math. Yeah, that's uh, right. No, I think... Um, there's, I, I, I was just so fortunate in, in my career to be around the, the process of how I look at things with, with the empowerment of the right teachers that I, I look backwards forwards, okay? Um, what things do I see that are really awesome about his game on tape, even though we're at... Hey, he's it, accurate as hell. Hey, boom! He, he, That's what I was just about to say. Oh, I didn't know. I, I was just... I, I, you were leading me. That's how, you should do this, maybe. Dude, think about it in the yeah. future. But you, he's or we so should, accurate. Or we should just spend the time finishing each other's... Sentences. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, did, did, have we known each other for... Our whole lives? Oh, my God. You tell... Me? Wow, this is weird. Dude. Whoa, Seems like you guys just became. Dude. Wow, this is fucking weird, AJ. Bro. Hey, this is... Did we swap skins? <laughs> wow, well, we learned a lot about yours, by the way. I mean, yeah. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir! Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hey, welcome back to that show. Hour three on this Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. Sports conversation shall resume right now. Here, Here we go. go. Out of right, yeah, it's the best no, one. AJ tried to fuck it up, but he did not derail. I did it. Talk, I did you, it. Oh, hey, man, I had the You wouldn't let anything go if it would have worked. Okay. By the way, the <laughs> Talks the Table here has been uh, reminiscing about our time with Sal Capaccio yeah. at Ty Schmidt at Boston Connor. Favorite guest of all time on the show? Definitely. He was the man. I honestly want to get everybody in here one of those just buffaloes with your name underneath it to put behind you guys. Now, is this because you're a Patriot fan that you didn't expect to love a Buffalonian Sal Capaccio as much as you certainly did? And that's why you're so surprised. How Did, did you not think we we're going to fucking love Sal? Of course we're going to love that man. Did you see the way he was standing in that interview? Yeah. Oh, Did yeah. you see the energy he came uh -huh. with? He said, Audio was perfect, too. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I Legend. mean, he was awesome. You thought we weren't going to like him, Connor? No, definitely not. Because the whole Buffalo team's hard to, you know, not like Josh Allen, all those guys. They're awesome. True, true, true. Right away. I mean, Sal, it was hard to actually look at him because his hands were just mesmerizing <laughs> me. He was all over the place <laughs> with his hands. It was awesome. What? Why are you pointing out how active he was with his hands? Because that's all right away, Tom right Dick, off the bat. Anthony DiGiulio, Franklin Malone. Italian, Malone. right? Wow. Well, yeah. oh, I, I don't judge How dare you. you? I don't judge. I don't know. What do you mean? It's not a slight. That's a good thing. The guy's got, he brings juice. It's a yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah, that's Duh. that's of course what they yeah. say. He was awesome. We did feel the beat again. It was a smashing success. We need yes, to keep this was. one around. Definitely. We yeah. need to keep this around, uh, AJ, at least through the season. Don't you think? Look at this guy. Oh, yeah. those hands. It's, like I said. Wednesday, Thursday during the season, this will be great to get an update on where teams are. I, I did not remember saying that about Matt Schneidman back in uh, 2019. <laughs> sounds accurate, though. <laughs> sure sounds like me, though, yeah, because Schneidman probably broke some news or whatever, and it's like, <laughs> I appreciate Schneidman, but... And he's watching and hearing you talk about him about to come on. <sighs> I try. 
A beat writer. I mean, that's pretty inside baseball. You know, we try to keep this thing as open as possible. So Feel the Beat is the great, you know, balance in between of like, hey, people are expecting local news at this time yeah. as opposed to us forcing local news down people's throats. Mm. You know, it's just a, I really enjoy the segment. I'm proud of us, AJ. I'm very proud of us for continuing to do it. I'm very proud of us. I, I saw you guys do it the first time, and I was sitting here watching as a fan. Like, this is great. I hope they go to somebody else. Like, who's next? Now, we did send out a couple bird calls to some people, and those uh, bird calls were not <laughs> responded yeah. to. I don't know how easy it's going to be to get beat writers on here, to be honest. I'm not uh, I think it's going to be – I think it'll be good. Uh, we've gotten three the first two times, but there has been multiple. Eh, I don't think so. No uh -huh. thank yous that have come Do they back. say no or they just not respond? B. Yeah. <laughs> Which is even worse. Yeah. Yeah. That's like – don't even – well, now that we know that we love it, though, we can we can play them weeks I got a couple out for now next week, week already. I think exactly. we're good for a couple weeks. Yeah, we got a soft maybe, I think, from at least one. Oh, so, look at know, us. So here, here we go. go. Yeah. We Is go. Mark Madden a beat writer? No. No, he said We have beat. Mark Caboli, remember. Yeah. Yeah. We have Mark yeah. Caboli. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. We, Dog. We love. I was reading Caboli. I was reading something on Caboli about he was talking about Trubisky and how the quarterbacks are doing in camp. How about when he um, – when he shit on Rudy's yeah. Mark Caboli. That was messed up a little bit. I didn't love that. Was that. that was kind of Double tough. Double M would Caboli. never. Well, you're right. Double M had a meet and greet last night, by the way. Packed the place out. Really? He actually put a tweet out. You would not believe how popular I am. He was at camp. He was at training camp. Yeah, and he said that. He said, I'm so I mean, I shouldn't be shocked, he said, basically, but I'm insanely popular. Yeah. Still was he wearing a jersey? Huh, what's that? Was he wearing a Juju jersey? Uh, maybe. I, I saw don't know. a picture of that. I, I, think. I guess, I guess Double M will have to certainly be on the next round. Though. He's not actually a it's beat writer, though. Like yeah. a beat yeah. reporter. We already, we already did Pittsburgh, too. Sure. We'll do Pittsburgh again because there's a lot of stories coming out of there. Let's mm. get into it. People are saying Kenny Pickett's having a good day. They're saying he's having a bad day. What do we know from this early in training camp, AJ, if you were to give an assessment? And also, with tomorrow night's Hall of Fame game, I think over 30 and a half is going to happen because Doug Peterson and Josh McDaniels are going to want their offenses, even if it's like fifth and sixth stringers, to at least resemble something that could have success because it's the first impression they're giving to their fan bases of what their team is going to look. So I'm thinking over, but I feel while I'm watching that game, I'm I'm going to say, you dumb motherfucker. Why would you ever think this game is going to have any uh, sign of success? Early defense is going to do well, right? That's basically just kind of understood. And what should we potentially look for tomorrow, AJ Hawk? Yeah, I mean, it, this seems to always happen where it's it's a real barn burner. We go into halftime and it's like six to three. And this this game could very well be that way. But I think at some point I'm going to take the over because I, I always will lean on, especially early on first preseason game, there's going to be some kind of mishap in the special teams, maybe a cheap touchdown, turnover, give you the ball on the two-yard line or something, and there's going to be some kind of blown coverage or whatever. They're not, they're not playing any exotics on defense. They're going to play base coverage, some man-to-man -man on third down, and, and I, I assume somebody will trip and fall or something will happen, and we get some points, and bam, we're over 30. Did you see the dirty graphic? Because there is some things on that graphic we need to take from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the Raiders, Who is the guy in the three-piece suit? Well. Uh, that's what numerous players from the Raiders are going to look like in about a month and a half from now. That's what okay. they, this is going to be their actual game day costume. Oh, yeah. It's going to be every day they're going to be selling shit. Nothing against that, by the way. Listen, no offense. A lot of humans do that. What we're saying is nobody of any importance is going to be playing tomorrow night because if you lose anybody that matters or gives a single fuck to your team in the Hall of Fame game, you're going to look like an idiot. Mm -hmm. that, like, actually, you're going to look like a, a full... It, before the season, uh, season even starts, you're already taking a step backwards. It's your first year as a head coach. They're not going to roll the dice with anybody, especially on a high school field in Ohio. No offense to Ohio or high school fields. But Jared Stidham knows McDaniel's offense. He was with the Patriots. He's an athletic guy. He can hopefully run for his life. Yep. If he has to, he might have some success. Big dick Nick Mullins. Mm -hmm. right. He's been around. He probably knows the offense a little bit. Uh, old Kyle Slaughter. I believe he was just playing football a few weeks ago. And Jake Lutton, uh, I don't know. He started against the Packers in the COVID year. So there might be some good offense, actually, even though the trend would, in my eyes, be defense, see ball, mm -hmm. get ball. Maybe there'll be a couple plays that they're able to bust down, score some points, and hopefully this over hits to start this entire season. So I went back. 16-3 uh, last year was the final, 14-10 the year before. So those two would have been under. But before that, 16-17 and 20-18, those two would have gone over. Uh, last year, I believe the under in week one was 10-2. and two, But those, but they were hit, they were sitting at totals of like 38-40. and 40. This one's at 30. Okay, it's, that's 30 is a little low. 
30 is a little, even a little low for me. Yeah, even if there's going to be maybe a pick six somewhere, yeah. you know. Something bl- block, field goal. They re- they take it back to the house. Like, something's going to happen. Late two, fourth quarter, guys are yes. still going to be trying. You got to run in. You got to run people in. Oh, guys got their tape off. You got to run in and be a wing on punt or something. Yeah. Raiders have great specialists, too. Like, you assume, Car- is Carlson going to be kicking? I, well, I don't know. No? I doubt it. Okay. Uh, Daniels no. wants to move the ball too. I mean, his hey, first man. time as the head coach sure. of the Raiders, he wants to move the ball. That's yeah. what I'm saying with Peterson too, down in Jacksonville. Like a lot of fan bases watching this game, not yeah. listening to our show at all, being like, "This war team's going to be this year." <laughs> yeah. And McDaniel's knows that, and Peterson knows that. Now they're adults enough; they both won a Super Bowl as coaches. Mm-hmm. I understand that they'll be like, "Well, fans are going to say what they're going to say," but this is the first impression that the entire fan base has of their team on a, in a Hall of Fame game. I'm, I'm sure. They're not thrilled about that. Had to go to camp earlier than everybody else and early, which, hey, let's get to work in. But also in a game that certainly doesn't matter is going to be the first impression for a lot of And I assume defense has a slight advantage also because, what, I don't know, a tenth of the playbook is in, maybe? They're only using a small portion of the defensive playbook too, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that's – Which helps sometimes. Yeah, it's like Thursday night football games. Go out there and play. Less to See ball, about. get ball. Yeah. Hey, look, we're not going to teach everything. Why? Well, I can't use it in the games. You're going to be a part of a roster. Yeah. So we're actually, there's no reason. Here's three pages. We're in cover two. See that? Yep. Look at this one. We're going to get crazy. Cover three. Whoa. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. We're moving to safety right to the middle of the field. Fucking shit's crazy. And wow. then here, look at this. Man to man. Goddamn. What is that? <laughs> yeah, base. No blitz, though. Nobody can rush. Outside linebacker. <laughs> you got to drop into coverage, actually. You take the running back. If the running back doesn't leave the backfield, you just fucking stand there with your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're allowed to do in these uh, preseason games. Let's go ahead and uh, run the hoop around the NFL a little bit. Broncos wide receiver Tim Patrick has officially torn his ACL already in training camp. We apologize to Tim Patrick for that. Godspeed on recovery that Denver Broncos team still going to be successful but quite a shot to their receiving core AJ Hawk yeah the injuries it, it sucks seeing them stack up especially when it's a season ender already but I guess if you want to look at the bright side hey at least it happened now so you will be full go when next season comes around Jensen of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers out for a season they they're saying he might be able to get back late in the season with yeah. his uh knee injury potentially oh. get back Tim Patrick he also out two big names out early. Uh, Debo Samuel addressed him playing running back and wide receiver because this was a talking point during the offseason for why Debo was frustrated with his contract situation with the San Francisco 49ers. Everybody else around him at his position was getting paid a boatload of money. He was coming up on the last year of his contract, not only as a top wide receiver, but he was also a running back for that Niners team. The pundits were yelling at me and everybody else saying he doesn't want to take any more hits anymore as a running back. They're wasted. He just wants to be a wide receiver. He is mad that they had him at running back. But at the Pro Bowl and other places, he said he enjoyed the wide back position. And I said from the beginning, if they were to pay him more money to play running back as well as play wide receiver, he would probably go in to do so. He has agreed to do that. And he has basically come out and said that everybody else is full of shit. Go ahead and run this Debo clip, shall we? Evan Foxy talking about him taking some reps at running back as well. One of the narratives this offseason was that you were upset with how you were going to be used. Can you... Uh, that's correct or not oh that is false um there's a lot of things that came out that i want to speak on but at the end of the day i wasn't allowed to so um i mean you can turn on the tape uh, go back to the cowboys game it kind of shows what kind of player i am um and also i mean you can go turn on the pro bowl tape and like what i said about being a wide back i don't mind you know what i'm saying do whatever it takes for this team to win so he's like maybe there might have been a little bit of frustrations when they were thinking you know what debo go ahead and just run right in some linebackers' faces and take these extra hits to your brain and your body that nobody else at your position has to do in the NFL, uh, and we're not going to pay you for it at all. That was when there was potentially a problem. Now that they added bonuses in there, Kyle Shanahan's brain can still utilize him with Kittle and uh, who's the pull and tackle? Brown? Trent Williams. Trent Williams, Williams I'm sorry. And with Trey Lance moving, that offense is going to be electrifying, AJ. They're all, like, Debo, you understand why they, they – you got to do whatever you can to keep the dude in town. He, not only is he an absolute monster on the field, he seems like a great dude, a great teammate from everything I hear from anyone that has played with him or coached him. So, yeah, I mean, of course, he doesn't want to be paid as a running back. He shouldn't be paid as a running back. He should be paid for what he does, and he has tons of production. So hopefully he's there for 10 more years. Uh, Debo is a real X Factor. Uh-huh. Speaking of an X Factor, who introduced uh, Aaron to Marcus Aubrey? Ooh. Oh. Aubrey Marcus? Yep. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Did you see that interview? today i didn't get to see it yet no i've known aubrey for like 12 15 years yeah oh, oh so, so i didn't introduce them no 
Oh, no. well, how, how does he? Because so it's oh, just, I don't know. He just knows them. Oh, so my friends just meet friends just out there. That interview, awesome, Aaron. It, there's a lot of clips going right now. Mm -hmm. Boom, yeah. boom, Iowa, awesome. boom, yeah, life, boom, boom. struggles, boom. boom. Aaron, I think it's like a two and a half hour convo. I think the world is chatting about it. I'm excited to listen to that full thing, AJ. Yeah, I've been seen. I've only seen clips so far as well, but yeah, I'll be checking it out. I think uh, Aaron spent definitely. I don't know how much time he spent in Austin, but I know he was working out down there with them. They have a nice gym. Let's mm -hmm. see if it. Let's see how it, how it goes. Let's go get a third MVP. Marcus Aubrey in a row. Marcus Aubrey. Aubrey Marcus. Fuck. His That's on name. me. Wait, Aaron did ayahuasca. Oh yeah. Well, I heard from the clip that yeah. I seen. He it, said it. It yeah. allegedly said that he helps with his mental health. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, I think there's a lot of studies in a lot of different fields. Not just in sports, but also in like military and other oh, yeah. um, psychologies. Mm -hmm. Sure, that ayahuasca does do a lot of you know potential brain repair and brain reset and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Although I've heard the trips are wild, AJ. I've heard it is a wild thing. I've, yeah, I've heard people talk about their their encounters. They almost have a hard time explaining it. It seems like it's so weird and different. You take uh, ayahuasca with Aaron Rodgers, AJ? I never have. I don't know, man. It seems kind of scary. Come on, just tell the truth. Come on. It's not scary. I heard a compliment. Yeah. Aaron literally just said he needed it. It yeah. helped him out. Changed his life. I mean, I, yeah, hey, I, 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 don't, I never say never, but I have not done that. What if you took ayahuasca and no longer fell asleep while driving? Ooh. Ooh. That's not an issue. I can continue. It that. is an AJ. issue. That's don't the issue. Don't drive with the sun. I, I was honestly talking to somebody. I don't somebody. drive with don't the drive sun. With the sun. Okay. <laughs> Hey, okay. I was talking to a head, head basketball coach of, of a basketball team around here. He, he has young kids. We're at a basketball game. He's Ohio like, State. you know what? Yeah, I was driving the other day. My wife was sitting shotgun, and I was driving into the sun. It was like 530. I said, you know what? AJ's right. He is right. Like, I'm getting pretty sleepy here. I said, it's right, man. Don't drive into the sun as it's going down. You know, AJ. <laughs> AJ. <laughs> AJ Hawk was right. I'm getting pretty tired. Hey, yeah. kids. I want to take the seatbelts <laughs> off. Uh -huh. We're going into order. That's unbelievable. I'm happy that you have found a support group for the sleeping while driving club. I mean, that is, this guy's a menace. Yeah. yeah. He's making other people feel comfortable with falling asleep while driving. Mm -hmm. I bet that guy threw in his left foot to see if that would help while he was breaking. Too. Oh, let me go ahead and see if I can drive with both feet here. Let me, let me drive with one finger because I can only really get one yeah. thing wrapped uh -huh. around the wheel here. Maybe I'll get on the uh, <laughs> overpass and, you know, light a cigarette while I'm filling my car up with gas while it's still running. You yeah. Know I mean? Still wouldn't light on fire. Maybe. No chance it's going to go. You got, you got to open sparks just coming out of your car? Yeah. Oh, there's a spark plug in there, but sure. you're right. There is no fire starting outside. It's just these are all precautions for, you know, you got gas, mm -hmm. pretty flammable. Yeah, pretty flammable. Sometimes. Yeah, you're at a, you're at actually at a gas station, you know. So mm -hmm. why would we want to have anything that could potentially start some shit happen? And signs read in most states, turn off car mm -hmm. while doing this. Yes. And you say, no, no, hi, sorry. It's literally the least you could do. The just, signs are there. The signs are there in Ohio? That's right. You're such yeah. an outlaw, dude. Oh. It's 95 and humid. I am not turning my car off ever. Actually. Rebel. Better hope you don't get a fucking piece of brush come yeah, by. Let's go to the phones. <laughs> this is unbelievable, dude. Your shit. I hate that we potentially... <laughs> tumbleweeds come by on fire. I'm that's, dead. That's yeah. right. Well, Boom. what about the um, cicadas on oh, fire? Yeah. yeah. Saw that Jurassic World Dominion. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If that happens. Big bug movie on fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trying to destroy yeah, the plant. That movie was so terrible. It was bad. That fucking I might need to see it. Chris Pratt shouldn't have let that one out. Well, in that Chris Pratt should have said, no, please. Wasn't it a big hit? That was a success, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it made a lot of money. Yeah, yeah all the dinosaur cult members, like 10 of them, went out there. You're a dinosaur cult, though. You are. Yeah, My yeah, wife also sure. part of the I'm cult, the Jurassic cult or whatever. Yep. But that terminalist. Exactly. Chris Good. Pratt should do nothing after. He should do nothing <laughs> ever again. <laughs> Him and TC. He should just be James Reese. Yeah. Just be yeah. that guy forever. How about the end? Hey. I was you weren't like, expecting that? Oh, I was fucked up. Not at all. I mean, you knew something was something, some misdirections happening. No, I didn't. And you don't even know misdirection because you don't listen to the scenes that set up the story anyway. Yeah. So, That's a good point. We learned that yesterday. Yeah. Everybody makes fun of my movie watching, which is like none. I get <laughs> disinterested quickly. Sure. Even I know that you're supposed to sit around through the dialogue scenes because that's actually how they shape the story. Yeah. yeah, you know you're supposed to, but you know you do not usually do that. I do. Yeah, you just... Unless Sam is there making you sit there and not fast forward and not fall asleep. Let's go to the folks. Yep. Let's go to uh, Jorge in Texas. What Tex you do in the dark will come to the light. 
That's right, and you and skip through the dark scenes, so you don't even know why they're in the light. That's the what I'm talking about. Unbelievable. Sometimes it's fun to try to figure out what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I was, wa we watched three episodes last night. My wife and I uh, wrapped that thing up. I just started counting all the dark scenes. Like there was a dark scene that happened. Them. I'm like, yeah. AJ didn't even see this. <laughs> AJ, AJ didn't even hear this conversation that was vitally important, literally yeah. in the next scene. And AJ's just fast. Well, give me the fighting. Give me the fucking. Yeah. Are we killing? Fu Why are we killing? I mean, final episode. There's about a 35 minute stretch in the dark that is kind of maybe one of the it's most. It's very action packed though, Ty. Yeah. It's very well, action packed. Fair. Fair. Uh, so the, if there's any action in the dark, you're around. But if there's not immediate heads getting chopped off, mm -hmm. you're out of here. Okay. No, I mean, if two people are chatting in a dark room and they're not, I already know the gist of the conversation. <laughs> bam, bam, boom, boom, boom. We're going the gist. 60, 80 seconds. Hey, but you already knew a. Uh, Diversion was coming, but you get the gist of the conversation. Great show. Great show. <laughs> Great <Unbelievable>. show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the phones here before Kyle Brandt joins us. Uh, Jorge in Texas on the 5 RNG phone line. Jorge, what's going on, pal? Hey, Pat. AJ, boys. How y'all doing? Hey, life is good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Hey, Pat, I want to talk about aliens today. I know you guys are oh, a huge go. show about aliens. Um, and I do... I do have family in Mexico. I do have a house in Mexico, and I want to talk about yeah, aliens man. in Mexico. And no, I don't. Uh, I don't mean illegal aliens. I mean actual aliens. Okay. It's. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa! I mean, Jorge. <laughs> okay, I understand. <laughs> hey, good joke. I assume that's in the. All right, let's go, Jorge. <laughs> All right, there is this town in Tamaulipas. It's called Tampico. Tampico. Okay? Hold on, hold on. So, can you spell that, Jorge? Well, yeah, sure. It's T A M. P I C O Tampico 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 Tamaulipas. That oh, city T. it's uh they believe they're protected by aliens. And I am not kidding. They haven't been hit by a hurricane in a long time That's because sweet. they believe they are protected by aliens. That's Look awesome. So why doesn't everybody believe that? Well, because not everybody's protected from aliens. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, bad Tampico. things happen. Huh. So it's Pampico? Tampico. Tampico? Oh, T. Mm -hmm. T, I believe. Zito. Did you understand what he said that second? Did you break down what he said that second I one? I did not hear him. I apologize. See, that's the thing. And I was talking to, uh, I think I was talking to Dominic Mysterio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, Dominic, I need some Spanish so that if I get into a Spanish conversation, like I just need small talk in Spanish so that the person that I interact with thinks I know Spanish. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm already gone by the time sure. I expose myself on not knowing Spanish. And he said, it's not really knowing the words. It's like, the accent on how to say yeah. the words. So whenever he, when Jorge said Pompey, and he said that next word, yeah. like the accent, like I couldn't, I couldn't even break, I couldn't even Just get stick it. with que pasa ese. Pasa aquí estamos mi amigo, eh. <laughs> and then a lot of celebrations, right. and then I try to bounce off, but mm -hmm. if I'm stuck, for like more than a minute, it's over. The yeah. the the gimmick is up. Or they you know. say igualmente. Or don't they ask baño? Yeah, but go to the bathroom. It's not just what you say though. It's how, how you, you say it. Don't they ask baño? Anyways, let's hope the aliens guard all the cities forever. And not the opposite, because I seen nope, and that seemed like a real problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Joining us now is a man that we say yup to all the time. Hell right? yeah. Every morning we turn on the show that he is an Emmy Award winner uh, for performing on very early every single day. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. This man brings the juice. He won from a producer in the jungle That's right. uh -huh. to maybe one of the biggest stars in all of media. Uh -huh. He's yoked, he's attractive, he's handsome, he has energy, and he's debuting a new show alongside the Omaha Productions, which is Peyton Manning's production company called Kyle Brandt's Basement. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Brandt. Yeah, Kyle! <laughs> Are you in your basement right now? Let's do it. Let's do it, Pat. Yeah. Traps. Yeah. Some lats. Yeah. I got my tank and my chain. Yeah. Jeez. All in, baby. Feels like that's a beater. That looks like a beater, not a tank top. Or is that a tank top? Uh, I think it's a tank top. Full disclosure, Pat. This came from my wife's closet. I don't own it. <laughs> <laughs> and you think that's good? So, uh, like 20 minutes ago, I'm like, oh, I want to dress up like Pat. Honey, do you have any black tank tops? Here's this one. And the best part is, yeah. I'm like, do you have like a gold necklace? Yeah. I had to get this from my six year old daughter's jewelry box in the nice. playroom. <laughs> so, I, I put multiple members of the Brandt family. I wish I had a stogie for AJ, but we don't do that here. But I, I feel great. Yeah, I tell you what, if you start lighting up in your basement there, that would be an aggressive decision. <laughs> you look good, Kyle. You look Thanks, very buddy. good. You could pull this off every day. I think I said this to you last year. We saw you almost. 
I don't want to say transform, but you've become recently yoked guy, right? Like super yep. into fitness. Oh, yeah. is, is this just new lifestyle? And what is it? What are you dieting, working mm-hmm. out every day? What? How do you do it? I, I finally bit the bull and I hired a trainer. It works, man. It, it turns out if you pay oh. someone 150 bucks for 40 minutes, it actually works. And they make you do the stuff, Pat. They do the stuff. They make you do stuff that you hate. Like all of us, even ex-athletes, are like, I know how to work out. I know how to get a lift. I don't need to pay. But then when you go in there and they get you those kettlebells and they do something called like Turkish get-ups oh, and you're yeah. lunging and you're doing – yeah, you done those things? Yeah, like, yeah, I they're terrible. They are. My own. But when the big guy who's like 240 with the barrel chest is like get down and do them, you do them and that's what you pay for. So it works. Turn out hard work actually works. You look good. Go ahead, Thanks, AJ. You too. Kyle, you've always been jacked in my eyes. I feel like Thanks, going buddy. back to your running back days, uh, when you're running the ball, like do you think if you were playing football now in today's NFL – you get kicked out every game. I know you have a big, hard head. You were running that thing right through the defenders all the time. Like, was that your style of play? AJ, you're all over it. Um, I remember back in the day, remember when when Trent Richardson came out of Alabama, wow. okay, and he goes to Cleveland, and they're like, this guy is going to be Jim Brown. This is like the nastiest running back we've ever seen. And there's a play from his rookie year where a safety came up, and Big T Rich, he just lowered the head, full crown, and we're not allowed to talk about it or play anything, but he, Earl Campbell, this guy. It was unbelievable. That was me in the Chicago suburbs in 1995, slower and shorter, over and over and over. My, like, my main move, like, this hat, look at, look at the size of this cranium. Yeah. I wear a seven and seven eighths hat, and I'm five foot 11. So my head was my biggest weapon. I was crowning everybody. And maybe that points on my behavior these days. I hope not. But, like, AJ, that's, that's my only move. I wasn't juking anybody. I was like a entry level four or five guy at my fastest. So like the crown, like don't come for the crown. You might miss. Like Wait, that was that was the thing. Didn't you go to Princeton though? You got very. No. You you have one of those thick skulls. You think zero oh. documented concussions? No, definitely not. I didn't say anything about that. I, there's just probably some damage down there. <laughs> <laughs> listen, hey, listen, Pat. Until you get blindsided from some guy from Yale, like you have not taken a hit. Yeah. Like, and those those dudes at Brown go hard because they yeah. get getting into Harvard. They they come for it. Uh, okay, let's <laughs> chit chat about all your successes. Even though it seems like you are a rock for brains, you're not at all. You're incredibly intelligent, very talented, and you always entertain like at the ass crack of dawn on the <laughs> NFL Network. So I was very excited to hear about a new show. Remember. We were some of the biggest supporters of that Friday. Um, what was that show? The NFL Network said, hey, Kyle, we want to give you a show, but we know it's going to fail. We're going to put it on a Friday at 5 o'clock. But you, you had no shot. You had no fucking right. chance in that show. What was it called? So imagine. I'll tell you what it's called. It's called Pat basically killed it before it started. No! <laughs> right. no! Imagine you're just some kid, and you used to be a radio producer, and you used to be on the fucking real world, and you used to be on Days of Our Lives, and the NFL – that the really premier bad. league in this country gives you your own program. I don't care if it's on at 2 in the morning on a Tuesday. I come on Pat's show at the time, and I'm selling it Friday night, 6 o'clock. It's happy hour. Have a beer. Watch the show. I think it actually could be a really cool uh, time slot. I think it's a good thing. And Pat's like, God. not. God. God. Oh, you're dead. That's never going to work. <laughs> never going to work. And guess what, Pat? That show was on for like 20 minutes. And it's like, no one watched football on Friday at 6.30. You think yeah. the, the NFL is unbeatable? It was beat. It, it got beat. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm back. Kyle, I only said that to you because of how big of fans we were yeah, of yes. yours. Like know, how, how big of a fan I am of yours. And I was excited to hear you got your own show. Thought it was a long time coming. And then whenever we heard the details, we're like, oh, of course. Come on. Of course they won't give up a good one. But now it feels like alongside Omaha Productions here with Peyton Manning and team that have been behind a lot of great ideas, great concepts, and I think they go all in. Kyle Brandt's basement. How did we get to this point? What's it going to be? And when does it debut? Congratulations. We can't wait to watch and listen. And thank you to the boys, and thank you to AJ. Uh, How we got to this point, the quick origin story was I did the thing last year with the Manning cast, with Peyton and Eli, who I, I know you guys know both of them, and I got to the point where I screen tested with Peyton and Eli for what would become the Manning cast. And when I say screen tested, this is a year ago. So we're in a Zoom and I'm in there, you know, Eli's eager beaver. He's like the first one there. And there's like 27 ESPN executives all there and I'm there. And then Peyton comes in and it's like, you feel hail to the chief in your head. And we watched the game, the three of us. I mean, this is like, dude, this was like some sort of bizarre acid trip. We watched the 2020 Browns Ravens game, which tape of it basically, me, Eli and Peyton. And just kind of talked ball, and I tried to, like, get out of their way. And 
tried to make a joke or tried to tee them up. And I thought it went well. Like, I cracked them up and everything. We get all, we get done with the thing. And one of the executives calls me and he goes, what'd you think? And I'm like, Peyton is so good. He's so good. Because we hadn't really seen him much in the media at the time. And Eli's so perfect. I'm like, I, this is a dream job. This is a hugely prestigious job. And I have to tell you, I, I, you shouldn't hire anybody. There should be no host. Whoa. Nobody. It should just be the two of them. And honestly, Pat, like, I think in that moment that earned me some credibility because there if I could have just said, no, I think we fit in well, I wasn't a fit. And I think they saw that and they're like, oh, that's kind of a cool answer. And then that was that led to this, which is Kyle Brand's basement. I'm in my basement right now. I'm right here, Pat. I'm, that like over there is my garage with like filthy soccer balls, and over there is my bar. Which way? So I feel like right, I'm right, right in between. Right? right. Is it that way? Right. right. Is my bar that way? Right. Hey, let me show you if you should try yeah. to look over there. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you give a little look? See, that ain't a horse uh, there. Yeah. Pat, let me comment on the outfit because this has to do with you and AJ. You'll love this. Part of the reason I'm wearing this outfit is because I feel like, in a way, Pat, you're the executive producer of this new show. Let me tell you, it's not a bone that I have to pick with you, but oh my God, I'm so goddamn exasperated with you. Good Every man. meeting that I take in my career to try to further my career, to try to put food on my family's table, Everyone, they're like, yeah, Kyle, so we're thinking maybe we could do like a Pat McAfee type thing. Hey, Kyle, you can do a Pat McAfee thing. Maybe Pat McAfee. And then I'll flip it and I'll come in with an idea and I'll say, you know, I got this kind of energy and I can be anecdotal and I can talk to the people and kind of be relatable. And they'll go, OK, so kind of like a Pat McAfee thing. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> enough with the Pat. I love Pat. Kyle, so Kyle, Pat, if it means anything, like... Kyle, if it means anything. I, I take that as a massive compliment that I'm even in the same conversation as you. And I would assume for a lot of these roles, hey, we need a jacked up, excitable football white guy. You know, I assume all those <laughs> roles are going to you that I, they are not offering to me. So I would like to let you know that I am appreciative of you representing our spirit in these Thanks, positions buddy. that would never get these types of jobs before though, Kyle. Oh, yeah. you know Thank that. you, buddy. Yeah. It's not a lot of us. It's And, and you look, you played in the league, but it's like, it's you and me, and then it's Scott Hansen on Red Zone, who they're that type of energy wow. of the white boys. There's not Sorry, many. Um, but I got a, listen, I got a text this morning from Peyton. It was my first ever text from Peyton, which was a thrill. You know, I don't know him. I didn't play with him, but I got a text from Peyton saying, you're going to do great, and you're going to kill this. Tell me what you think of my response, because I got a little nervous, and I was at a stoplight. <laughs> how, quick, how quick did you Peyton. respond? How quick did you respond, first of all? All right, so I was driving, and I was driving through heavy traffic. So I'm like, I got to show Peyton that I mean business. And then I want to respond right away, because that's the kind oh, of teammate he wants. Oh, so I pulled over, and I pulled over and did it safely. Here's, here you go. I said, Peyton, thrilled to hear from you. Proud to be part of this. Listen, man, I'm going to be your edgerin. Big plays, workhorse, and a little bit wild. Was that good? Yeah, I mean, Edrin would probably be like, well, it's actually pretty cerebral. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, calculated. but yeah, I, think, uh, I got the response. Yeah. There was not a text response, but he did the thing where, like, Peyton loved your text. With the oh, okay. Oh. I liked it, baby. Yeah, Love. yeah, so. love's good. Love's good. And then you're just not going to talk ever again? Or are you going to send him one tonight? Like, hey, man, talks about your text today. Seemed to go over well. Tell him good night tonight. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I got his number now, so I could get JJ. I could start doing gifts. I could start sending oh, you a lot of lists. You know, like, games. hey, if you're having trouble sleeping tonight, here's this spoken word McConaughey thing. It works for me. Yeah, like, oh, oh, hey, baby, you guys are besties. I got you. Whatever you need. Please I'm working for the company now. Hey, um, I think AJ Kyle, real quick, can yeah, I ask ahead. a question, though, Pat? I know Pat yeah. told me. So first, can you explain exactly what you're going to be doing on the show in your basement? And also, are you in the process of tracking uh, Shefty down because Pat tells me he scooped your your whole announcement. That was awesome. <laughs> the Shefty thing is fascinating. So thank thank goodness for Adam Schefter. He tweets the show yesterday. I, I might have mistimed it a little bit in which I said, oh, hey, guys, I'm going to announce something really cool tomorrow. And like 26 seconds later, Adam Schefter said, Kyle Bryant has a new show. And yes. it looked like I got scooped. It was literally, it, it was like 20 minutes later. The picture is fucking Holy phenomenal. Shit. I think we picked that photo, right? Yeah, yeah you guys did. the creative liberty. That was not the picture of the chef. <laughs> Those been, are in no. my private files. <laughs> <laughs> you look good. Um, but no, the show is, uh, look, it's it's similar. I'm, I'm not messing with you. It's it's similar to what you guys do. I, I'm in this crazy set. Look at this. I got I got the warrior here. Hell yeah. I got, I got all my guys. That's my Brawler. favorite nice. of all time. Over here, I got I got a uh, I got MJ. I got what? Vince Carter's up there. I got Ooh. Dominique. 
Wow. There's dartboards, there's basketball hoops. I'm going to work out while I talk. I'm going to tell you what I love, <laughs> what I hate, what's hilarious. It's going to be like a really constructive, organized shit show, and we're going to hang and maybe smoke cigars and hammer beers. It's going to be awesome. So I, ooh, I think I saw, um, are you going to have people in your basement or is it going to be uh, via Zoom or, or call? They'll come to the basement. And Pat, like, I, I don't know if this is going to drive you crazy, but um, another thing I followed in your footsteps for, every Tuesday uh, I have the same guests as you do. Well, and it is a very, 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 very big NFL player who is committed to come every Tuesday who? and um, unbelievably excited. I'm kind of not supposed to say it. Do you, do you want, can you guess? Is it Antonio Aaron? Brown. Zach oh. Wilson. <laughs> I wish it was Antonio Brown every Tuesday. Hold on, wait. Because your tweet said most talented player. Is it Patrick Mahomes? It's not Patrick Mahomes, but you're you're on the right track. Every Tuesday. Josh Allen. Bills. It might be Josh Allen. It might oh. not. I don't know. Oh. Oh. Hey. Don't know. That's good for all of us. That's good for us, too, that you're doing that, by the way. So we are very thankful for that. Thanks, bud. No problem. Um, listen, you know how many segments we have filled on Good Morning Football with, with Roger segments on this? We just do it basically every single week. It's been amazing. So thank you, because sometimes there's not squat to talk about. Well, believe me, yeah, we just, there's been a lot to not talk about yeah. <laughs> over the last couple. Are you guys live? Or are you pre-record? When are you going? We'll do, we'll do some live, some pre-record. Tell me what you think of this, Pat. you got a keen eye for the media. AJ, you too. Um, I'm going to do, I was going to do a show Monday through Friday for the next month. And then when the games start, I'm going to do a show Sunday night right when the second window of games ends. So if you're not into football night in America with all their bugles and pretentiousness, come right in here, <laughs> talk about whatever you want. We'll recap the games the second day. I mean, come on, Pat. That, it's a really well-produced show, but it's a little pretentious. I feel like we're going to go, welcome to football night in America. We start tonight in Ukraine. Like, I feel like I'm watching Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. Right, uh, a got, lot of sports. Like, we, it's, a, it's fine, but like, it's a lot. We, I get it. Are you, where are you going to be live at? YouTube? Yeah, it's on all the ESPN digital platforms, ESPN YouTube, and then you can also just get it as a podcast, audio only, like wherever you get your podcast, as they say. That sounds like a good idea. I, I think the um, when we did the Barstool Tailgate show, we were trying to compete with like a tail, like a kickoff show. Yeah, like people's habits. You know what I mean? Like you just you're gonna have to just stick with it because people develop their own habits. Like going to Football Night in America is literally everybody's Sweet. move, mm -hmm. right? Like everybody just goes directly to Football Night in America. So what I'm saying is I think you got a brilliant idea on Sunday. I, I enjoy Ooh. that. I think we'll watch it. Oh, yeah. Stick with it, though. I think everything's consistency, right? You know that. I think everybody knows that. Sure. Go ahead, AJ. You're going to say something there about Sunday night? No, not about Sunday night. I think whatever you're going to be doing, Kyle, I, I'm just curious. Is there a set end time or is it just a straight, we get to see Kyle Brandt until you want to go to bed? Oh, no, it'll be, you know, it'll be on Sunday nights, man. It's just. When the games are over and you sat there for six hours and you ate too much or drank too much and like I don't know for you guys like I don't go on so Monday morning usually and I have that thing where I'm like I can't wait 10 hours I have to talk about what I just saw from Kyler Murray or from DK Metcalf or whatever and so you do it immediately and then it's this I could go for three hours if I want I could go for 40 minutes but we're gonna nice. in the second the game ends let's talk let's talk shit. Let's say who dropped the ball. Let's say who needs a whiskey. Let's say who won the day. Like, just immediately crown people. I don't want to wait till Monday morning. Hey, this is a big fucking deal, Kyle. Yeah. This I, isn't I, just – I thought this was going to be just a couple couple episodes. Yeah. Monday through Friday and on Sundays in the fall is a lot of work. With it's Good months. Morning Football, I mean, like, I know you run hot. You're an energy guy. I, I can't wait to see more of you, but this is a fucking – you're going to be doing a lot here, Kyle. Let's go. Thanks. I appreciate you. And listen, people ask. They're like, I saw the announcement in the Schefter tweet. They're like, Oh my God, you're leaving Good Morning Football. I'm not leaving anything. I'm doing Good Morning Football in the morning and then the afternoon. And like, you know, Pat, like when the opportunities come in, you, you can't sit here and say, I don't know, that's too much work. Like the hell with that. You take them. You say yes. Like this is the time to say yes. I'm in my, Kyle. my prime, I think. Hey, I hate What's to up, cut you man? off. Would you ever go back on, uh, I know your, your real world background. Would yeah. you go on the challenge and take on Ooh. CT? That'd be Ooh. nice. CT would spit me out, man. Uh, AJ, right now? Listen, I know. you're soft or ever? Always. Maybe always. It's, I'm strong now. Like, I, I honestly think that I'm stronger than I was when I was a college football player, but it's the knees and it's the hips. And here's the thing. Anytime I get the itch, because I get it, AJ, sometimes, like, you see those promos and they'll be like, this season. on. Yeah. <laughs> if I ever get the itch to, like, oh, maybe I can go down there, whip some ass and, you know, like, win a Saturn or something, like, whatever they win now. Like, and then I see the promos. And I watch these promos and it's like, People on black light cameras, triple kissing and sucker punching each other. I'm like, I'm out. I got two kids. 
I'm sitting around drinking a martini with a little bit of a gut. I'm not going to go on those things and get backpacked. I'm not going to go out that way. No way. So I am out. Hey, could you imagine Emmy Award winning Good Morning Football host yeah. plus Daily Show host Kyle uh -huh. Brandt's basement gets buckled by poopies. Yeah. <laughs> In the Biggest show. season ever. <laughs> That's going to be tough to come back from. Um, Can't do it. Yeah. How many people are going to be on daily with you? You, your producer staff, ESPN's producing this or Omaha's producing this and sending Omaha. it to Omaha. It's Omaha, man. It's Omaha. And it's like, look, it's, it's going to be mostly me. It's, it's kind of a short show. It's only like 45 minutes hour at the most. So look, there's been so many shows and obviously you guys have done it that have perfected the guys, no. the crew, it's guys hanging out. We have not, like it's, we have not perfected fuck. Okay? Uh, well, you listen, know, yeah. I was watching one time when one of the boys went to the bathroom and you timed him to see if he was number one or number two. And I'm like, that's perfection. Like, that's the <laughs> okay. <perfection."> it was <laughs> a was shit, by the way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was you, Todd. Yeah, I, I assume so. Yeah. Diabolical. That was tough. So I don't, I'm not going to have, you know, the Kyleettes or any of that <laughs> stuff. It's mostly just me letting it rip. And I got toys to play with, man. I got all kinds of stuff around here. So it'll be quick. It's just, I think it's just going to be me, which is going to be hard, but as you know, like, I, for some reason, I got the crazy energy. I can keep talking. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, uh, Kyle, up, with Connor? with the addition of McCordy and Jamie, is that kind of what gave you the uh, push to kind of go do more because of the fact that, you know, they're so good on there already? And have you and uh, Shrags kind of felt like you had to pick up the slack or kind of teach them something yeah. while you were on there? Uh, it's a great question. I appreciate it. The, this this long predates them adding to, getting added to the show because listen we do crazy stuff on Good Morning Football in the casting sense like I didn't even meet Jamie Erdahl until she was cast so there was no chemistry wow. test there was no like oh let's see how it works Jason McCordy I barely knew so they brought in like hit the ground running professionals like they go and you know this Pat like Jason's got these great stories like AJ you come with like these great Packers stories you got. Jason's got the Brady stories. Jason's got the I was on the 0-16 Brown story. Oh. Like, listen, we're talking today about this Miami Dolphins thing with the tampering. And we're talking a commercial break. And Schrager turns into Mike Wallace. And he's just like, so, you know, Jason, you were on that 2019 uh, Patriots team that Brady was on. Like, how does it make you feel that it looks like he was looking at other teams? And, you know, he was trying to leap. And then he got his ass kicked in the playoff game and played terrible and cost you a playoff bonus. How does that make you feel? And um, Jason had a take. I'm not going to reveal it because he didn't tell me to. But my point is, he's got all that stuff. And he's awesome with it. Second he got there. Was his take? Yeah, a player is about to own a fucking team. I'm all in. Yeah. <laughs> Shrek, he pointed out the merits of ownership at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would assume. Hey, Shrek, stop being a mark, dude. All right? A uh, teammate of mine was going to be an owner of a goddamn team. Go ahead, Ty Schmidt. Kyle, as a massive fan, I don't know if there's any way we can maybe make sure this happens. But is... Is it possible that maybe for one of the episodes in the basement we can get Romy back in there and kind of recreate some of that jungle magic? I mean, the, us guys who have been listening for a long time crave it. We love it. And what kind of uh, relationship do you still have with Rome, if any? Uh, it's an awesome question. I would love to have Rome down here, especially since you're a clone from back in the day. Hell yeah. You know that literally his phrase was, I'm going down to the basement, like when he was on vacation. So he'd come down to my basement. Um, listen, I, I had my departure with Jim six years ago, I think, when I left to do Good Morning Football, and it was the most beautiful thing ever. We had this like poetic final beer and hugged it out, and then when he got to the Hall of Fame, he brought me and shouted me out in his speech. We don't talk a ton because just Jim's about the grind and about the prep and Obviously. about the work and about the family Beast. and uh, like just getting the martinis and driving the, the, you know, the sled. And He does his whole lifestyle, so we don't talk that much, but like we ended it beautifully. And I mean, I love the guy, just love him. So I'd love to have, imagine if Jim Rome came on. Pat, is you, have you had Jim Rome on this show? Uh, no, wow, same he's time. on the same time. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Well, we talked about him, though. We We're, love him, though. We're yeah. next, next to him at Radio Row. We show uh -huh. massive respect to Jim Rome, and Jim Rome hears it. I think Jim Rome knows that because I think so, too. I hope so. Because the whole daily grind, man. I mean, you know, obviously, with Good Morning Football, and you guys are comparing Greek yogurts to football teams with their... Because yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like, there's times there where there ain't shit to talk about. So Jim Rome and all the guys that have been able to do it for years and years and years, I got massive respect for. I like to hear that you guys ended amicably, though. You know? like that's, Oh, yeah. That's Listen, how it should be. 
I've, I've heard about some other people in the industry where, you know, their producer leaves or their writer leaves and they're like, fine, get out of here. You're competition Who? now. Debut. I was worried about AJ. that. AJ, AJ, jeez. What happened? This ain't, AJ that? wanted you to start. Who? Come on. Who? Yeah. It's not the real world, dude. Dogs no. in these people. There ain't no yeah. reason to do Why? that. Tone, your question, please, for Kyle Brandt. Kyle, um, one of the highest honors in the NFL, um, and unfortunately some of us in here never got to be able to get this honor, is – Receiving the scepter for angry runs. Oh hell yeah! And because we, I can't. Hell yeah! And we can't receive that honor. Is there anything that like we could run through that maybe would impress you enough to maybe send us a scepter one time? Oh, or put it on the intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I will definitely do it. it. Incidentally, it sounds like the guy who got his bathroom trip timed had the angry runs, but that's that's not the kind that. Oh, we Ohio. Uh, <laughs> pretty good. That was all. Awesome. Basement on Omaha Productions. No, yeah, of course, guys. Like I've given it to a groundskeeper before. I've given it to a photographer. Like I'm kind of tired of giving it to Jonathan Taylor and Derrick Henry all the time. I would love to give oh, it to Jonathan. someone in the media world. Run through the wall or run over AJ. AJ, are you still ready yeah, to tackle? Yeah. Come yes. on. Yes. I'll give it a shot. I think you should run through a, like the glass window <laughs> yeah. right there where the boys are. Hey, Kyle. I just want to let you know, Kyle. What? AJ could still give you. 15 to 20 goal line plays right now. Oh, if you yeah. Goal line? Uh -huh. Goal line. Yeah, that's why I said goal line. I'm yes. not changing. I can't change direction or stop. I know that. He's going yeah. straight. At, and he, by the way, still, Kyle, he, it looks like it now because he, he's I'm got a costume. I'm Kyle on. Kyle, look at your, Kyle's got that movie star head and he's jacked. I'm not taking you up high. <laughs> Kyle, you do have a massive head, as does AJ. Huge. AJ's lying right now, though. He, he would go. Yeah. Right out to jaw if he could right now, if he had to. That AJ would be like that forever. Him and Bobby Carpenter and Schlegel oh, yeah. still measuring body fat percentage to this day, weekly. No. Yeah. That is what yeah. this fucking guy's doing, AJ, or Kyle. Look With that you. little caliper pincher, you're still measuring the body fat? Yeah. Uh -huh. Every week. Look at him. Look, he knows. Look, look yeah. No, we got it. No, we got it. We invested in a bod pod. We always. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God, do you remember that? They would pinch your fat and then measure it. And like, that was nowhere near pincher. real, by the way. That was nowhere near accurate. Of course not. It yeah. was this arbitrary thigh pinch. And like, how many little heavyset kids were traumatized by that? What a stupid thing we used to do. Well, there's a lot of stupid oh, yeah. things that go on, including not this show there. daily. And you're going to join in on that with the Kyle Brandt's basement. That's De right. Debuting when? When's the start? Monday, August 8th. This coming Monday, man. 1.30. Uh, here, here we go. go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, go directly against us. Good luck. Uh, appreciate that. It's unbelievable. That's. Did you think about that? You're just going to say, hey, I'll go directly against uh, Pat and the boys, even though... It did occur to me. It did occur. It, it, it did. It's probably not the wisest, but like you said, no. Pat, got to stay at it. Got to stay at it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. Now, People... Maybe that's why I'm going Sunday night, so I can win one round out of five. That's no, right. no, no. Listen, there is. we started at different parts, this whole thing. We used to have 15 people watching for a long time, so we are very lucky to still do it. And people watch your content at different times. Doesn't matter when they see it, how they see it. It's a completely different game. Good luck with everything. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Kyle, obviously the Bills, because you got Josh every Tuesday. I think they're going to win the. I think the Buffalo Bills are going to win the Super Bowl. Pat, I, I really do. But I said that before I got Josh every Tuesday. I think you know what my 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 short 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 take on the Bills. If they had literally added no players in the offseason, didn't add Von Miller, didn't draft a single player, including a punter, just added nobody, I still think they're the Super Bowl favorites, even without adding a single person. And yet they did. I think they're loaded, loaded. As are we in the sports media world now that we get a chance to hear you every single day. Uh, can't wait to watch. We'll have to watch after our show. Yes. Mm -hmm. We won't be able to catch you live. I'm sure it'll be great. Uh, Kyle Brandt of Good Morning Football and host of Kyle Brandt's Basement debuting on Monday. We appreciate the hell out of you, pal. Love you, Pat. Love you, AJ. Love you guys. You Thank too, you ladies so and gentlemen. Kyle Brandt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Good luck to him. I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Josh Allen every Tuesday will actually have tidbits. That's huge. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's awesome. very good for all of us. That's like the Tom Brady thing that happened we thought was going to be great for us. We used a couple clips whenever he was talking to Jim, Jim, Gray. Jim Gray on Mondays on uh, Sirius. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then now that that's happening on Tuesday. That's great news for yeah. everybody. Unbelievable. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That dude's going to be, I mean, he already is busy. He's going to be very busy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, adding a morning show to an afternoon show, I mean, I don't think I'd be able to do it, obviously. Hats off. Kyle Brandt's and then Sunday be. night, how late is he going to be on Sunday night, and then he's got to be on the air at what time Monday morning? The Sunday night thing I don't think is going to last. It's going to be tough. I, I don't want to be a hater to Kyle Brandt, but I'm just – that's a whole – he's going to be fucking exhausted, and also he's going to have to withstand a lot of, like, habit changes with numbers, yeah. and it's like I wonder if he'll continue to do it. But I understand what he's saying, too. That's why I fire off, like, 100 tweets – I yeah. want all my thoughts uh -huh. from the day to be documented. Like some people will tweet me on Sunday and be like, uh, oh, you're tweeting too much or whatever. Those are, these are just reminders to myself for Monday's show, mm -hmm. how I felt 
at a time. Like this, you're basically seeing Monday show get built on my Twitter on Sunday throughout the entire thing. Yeah. And uh, but if he's going live, I'll fucking watch him. I think Kyle is incredibly, incredibly entertaining. Yeah, it's tough just because football night in America is it's a habit. It's just it's an like institution. Game yeah. day. Yeah, it's exactly. an institution. Bingo. Yeah. yeah. So, but you can watch on the phone. Mm -hmm. and you can watch on TV. True. And Kyle Brown make it entertaining and exciting and have it a little be a little bit different. I'm pumped for that. I'm thankful for him. I'm excited for him. Mm -hmm. And also, all those networks that won't hire me are allegedly asking him, you know, hey. if he's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. it's mm -hmm. interesting. That's fucking. Real interesting, yeah. you fucking suits. Something wrong about it. Well, you know that. Uh, let's add some phone calls as we get out of here. I like Kyle a lot, AJ. Like, He's the man. Genuinely like him a lot. Mm -hmm. I remember I, I met him back when he was the producer for Jim Rome, and I had a couple of buddies that were in PR, and they were telling me about him back, way back in the day, how awesome he was. And then I, I remember I recognized him from the real world. I was a big real world guy. Yeah, me too. That's why I think I'm such a big fan of The Miz as well from all yes. the way back there. But like... That Friday show Ooh. that they gave him. I never heard of that. Dude, so, I, I felt like, I mean, had to say it. Nobody was going to say it to him, you know? He knew it. No, he didn't. Remember, he was so. hyping himself up. He just told so, us. No. He was just telling yeah. us he didn't. He was all excited about it. He thought it. Because I think Kyle is a fucking megastar. So when he yeah. got a final show and they put it on at like 6 o'clock and they yeah. got other shit, I'm like, no what are we even this. doing here? Like, why, why are we not? You know what I mean? I, mean, I think that's why I told him that, because I thought he was being mistreated by the people that were setting up the programming. But now he's getting an opportunity to go daily. I'm fucking happy for him. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Andrew in Muncie, Indiana, home Ball State. Chirp, chirp. chirp, chirp. chirp. What do you want to talk chirp. about, uh, Andrew, on the 5 hey, Energy phone line? Fat boys. Garfield moving. Bob Ross. Yep. First off, uh, awesome. Ty. How are you never talking about the Atlanta Braves, previous World Series champion? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dansby. Dawson Knox. Dansby. Yeah. We had Dansby Swanson on last week. You hear AJ Close. say Dawson Knox. That's what <laughs> yeah, AJ Swanson. just said. Talking about to, uh, Dansby. Go Bills. 10 year, 212 million. Congrats on that. Okay, congrats. But, uh, <laughs> how the hell is Walton going to buy the fucking Broncos, but yet. I work at a Walmart distribution center, and I'm getting my fucking hours cut. So oh, push, fucking bullshit. What's that about? Cronky side. $60 billion my way. Fuck him. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> Hell yeah. You got a point. Right. I respect that so much. I would like to let him know that I... I'm not 100% sure those go hand in hand, but I do understand <laughs> why he's pissed off. And I appreciate everybody that fucking breaks their back for this country to continue to go. I wish you all get treated much, much better. And I hope you nothing but good luck in your fight to do as such. Oh, yeah. With that being said, I worry that Walton does not give a fuck about Andrew, and that is a problem. Uh, no. But he is spending a lot of money on Russell Wilson, and let's ride all over Denver. That's right. Pay Sorry. that fucking man over time. This is bullshit. It is. By the way, you can go down the line. A lot of people uh -huh. making a lot of money when a lot of the people uh -huh. that helped right. them earn that money aren't. Yeah. But that's, I mean, this is a bigger conversation than what we have. We're coming up on a hard out here in eight seconds. <laughs> we tried. I hope everybody gets paid the amount that they deserve, although I fear that they won't. Chris Mad Dog Russo is next. <laughs> oh, yes. There you go. Three seconds with that. That was a lot of words. Uh -huh. He can blame Bezos. They got to compete with Amazon. Well, that's a whole nother conversation, right? He's got yeah. a space taking little whoop de woos yeah. around in yeah. that goddamn warehouse. Here in Indiana, yeah. <laughs> Burning down. That's not our show to figure out, though. <laughs> nope. One day, maybe. Sure. Whenever we get bored of talking sports every day, which hopefully will never occur, but if it does just so happen to happen, I will dive into all that and I will help Andrew's cause because I do believe he's on the right side of it, but. I'm not equipped for that conversation right now. Well, we can nope. send it to Cal, and then Cal can send it to Nate. Actually, let's call Jordan. Let's see what Jordan's. Will you call Schultz? Jordan? No. No, well, I think he's coming up in conversation right now. His dad's uh, <laughs> not working, oh, really? with, oh, God. working stuff with, with the same situation, by the way. So wish huh. we could help everybody. Not equipped to do as such just yet. But can we pull, uh, call Jordan, please, yep. get an answer on this? Call Jordan up. Here we go. Whew. Hope we get him. I hope so, too, man. Yeah, me too. Jordan knows it. Oh, huge. Ah, poop. Voicemail. Ah, I'll call God, him back. Poop. Yeah. Must be pooping. I don't know if he's pooping. Does he poop? Does Jordan poop? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. Not What's dirt. that? Are you all right? I have not witnessed him poop, so I don't know. Say I can't say for sure. Not at this time of the day. <laughs> what a day today. Logan Paul, Matt Money Smith, Sal Capaccio. Yeah. Matt How Schneidman. was Logan? I didn't get to see Logan. How Logan was, it? was awesome. Yeah. He, was, he just got done sparring. He forgot he had the interview, and he showed up like three minutes late. He was literally taking the mouthpiece out mm -hmm. as he was FaceTiming. Great conversation. Built to be a WWE superstar is basically the end of the convo. Yeah. 
Yeah, it sure. See, I mean, his when he, back on Vine back in the day, he was doing all the crazy like wrestling, like like amateur wrestling stuff that well, you could tell like, oh, okay, this guy is explosive and athletic. His him and his brother shut down Vine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the Vine people never come out and say it, I assume, and the world won't admit it. But as soon as Logan and Jake said, oh, yeah, we'll go right over here. And they said, do it. All right, well, you don't exist anymore. Bang, became YouTube, became the whole thing. I mean, it's just trailblazers, making a lot of money, doing things their way. I got a lot of respect. He admitted about how he didn't know shit about fuck early and he, mm-hmm. how he hasn't really truly come into who he is since for the last few years of his life. And the whole public has watched it. And I think he acknowledged it. It's a gift and a curse there. But... Uh, what he has been doing with the WWE, I'm fucking big, big fan of. Big, big fan. So of. how often do you, do you have any idea how often he will wrestle? No, and I was thinking about asking it, but I don't know what's gimmick and what's not. You know, like I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to put him in a situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Feels like a Def- premium live event guy. It does. Yeah. Feel definitely. like that's the case, but he can go. Mm-hmm. Like you know, he can go. That no, photo. that was a compliment. No, I know, but I think like. I don't know, like with how much, how good a shape he's in and mm-hmm. how much he can do, like, I don't, I didn't want him to tell us, like, yeah, I'm going to be there more than people expect because mm-hmm. if he was to only be a big show guy, it would make sense. But also if he was just fucking show up randomly, oh, yeah. it would make sense it's as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what their plans are with Logan. I didn't want to be the place that, you know, because uh, k fights the real around here. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's right, isn't it? He was good, though. He was great. Feel the Beat was a lot of fun with Matt Money Smith, Al Capaccio, Matt Schneiden, and then Kyle Brandt. With Kyle Brandt's basement debuting next week. What a show today. Yeah. Show. Awesome Bombs show. And t- I mean, we got football. Bro. Tomorrow's huge. We got a Hall of Fame game tomorrow, dude. And here we go. And, and hey, Kyle kind of buried something at Football Night in America. He did. Yeah, that was interesting. What did he say? I mean, he mentioned them talking about Ukraine. Ukraine. Yeah. Some of the things he said was, I mean, that's probably not a, uh, false about Yeah, but he's Ukraine on the thing. ESPNs. So, like, I mean. They're doing that, too. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm happy Kyle Brandt will not be. Very yeah, nice. right. right. I'm happy that he'll, he'll be, be jacking weights down there, he said. You mean the Espies? Chugging bears. How the camera gonna, does he have like nine cameras in there following him all around the room then? I don't know. I'm pretty excited to see what happens in the basement. Is that man. his actual basement? I don't buy that. It feels like it is. Oh, I do. It's a little small. He's more it looks a outside. little small. Yeah. He lives in New York. Does he live in New York? Yeah. No, he lives Jersey? in New Jersey. Still. Okay. He's so got a beautiful backyard, dollars. dude. I've seen his fucking Where's house. Where's Josh Allen? He deserves a fucking beautiful house. Yeah. Josh Allen's in Buffalo. Yeah, it's a little bit of a haul. He's calling in. What do you think this is? Well, he said sometimes he was going to be in his basement, he said. No, he said some guests will be in the basement, not uh, not every guest. Like Shregs will be in the basement, probably. Shregs probably like, lives close, right? I don't know. Sounds like Shregs has a different interview style than Kyle Brandt. He does, did, yeah. The McCourty thing seems in Mike there. Wallace. What's Shregs trying to do? Huh? He's trying to tear McCourty and break him. Trying to him. embarrass people? It ain't right. What's Shregs doing? What's Shregs doing? You said it. Don't be a fucking Mark, Shregs. Yeah. Shregs. Don't be a mark, dude. Figure it out. Do you know how happy I would be for one of my teammates if they were potentially going to get ownership in a fucking team? If they came up to me and was like, listen to what's fucking cooking, maybe. You know I'm a free agent next year because they couldn't work out a deal here because they've been trying to fuck me over for like the last 20 years or yeah, whatever? Right. There's, how about people are telling me, like, maybe own a fucking team? What? Yet yeah, a team's going to give me a percentage of the fucking team to go play for. Who's the team? Miami. Ah, we'd have to play you twice a year. <laughs> You're still a fucking owner there, dude. Yeah. This is awesome. Is like, I think wouldn't I think we would all be pretty excited for our fucking teammate if that was to happen. Uh, yeah, I'd say, oh, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> give me a percentage, bud. I'll come do whatever you want. Hey, pal, are you gonna fucking hire me, dude? <laughs> no, director of football operations. You know how cool that would be. Like, I would be, and I guess not every person thinks like this, but I honestly believe team sport people get genuinely happy for their teammates' successes. And whenever business takes place and people are out of the building and they're handling their business and however it ends up, like teammates are normally very, very like, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. I think if I found out that a teammate uh, of mine was in discussions to own a fucking team, I'd be like, here we let's go. go. Yeah. Let's make this a new standard. And I think a lot of people would feel that way around the NFL, even though I guess there's some pundits thinking the opposite. I just, I haven't even thought about that not being the case, but here we are, AJ. It never crossed my mind to think like, oh, is this guy not focused on this season because he's, he, someone told him that he maybe get to own another team, the Miami Dolphins. And like you said, he'd been taking a discount for 20 straight years and they can't figure it out now when I've been here forever and won so many Super Bowls. Yeah, I never once was like, Oh, this guy doesn't like the team here. He doesn't want to. He's he's bailing on his guys. Oh, you want to own another team? Why don't you go fucking play for him now? <laughs> like, is okay. that what is that what a teammate? That yeah. I guess in a movie, teammates yeah. would yeah. do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you're either 100 percent committed to us or you're nothing. It's like, well, 
as soon as they start paying me, like I'm, <laughs> another team seems to be a bit more committed. You know, <laughs> a team like uh, it's just it's different at the professional level. I think like that is that just continues to become the narrative with this show. I think like you can't view NFL football as if how you viewed your high school football team yeah. and how you viewed high school football. It is just so different. It's it's a business. There's a lot of money being made, and uh, whenever that kinds kind of comes into conversation and shelf life and injuries and being fucked over, it's just like. It's much more than that, and I think it should be viewed as such on a regular basis, just like this. Yeah, and fans just view it differently, too, just because they want their team to be good. And if there is the possibility of a player leaving, then that's one thing. But we saw— But, yeah, you guys ran him out of town, though. We all know that. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, Johnny Foxborough. Yeah, you guys actually, say, hey, Johnny Foxborough, why don't you go ahead and get on two horses, maybe make it three, get a stable, mm -hmm. and get the fuck yeah. out of town, pal. Huh? actually included uh, the contract offer that they offered Tom in that whole entire thing, which was very good. And, I mean, very good. it's more than he's making in Tampa. Bay, but wow. uh, we, we we talked about I didn't know that. they talked about this with like Debo and like George Kittle during the whole Debo thing he talked about, it. and then even Aaron when he talked about Devonte when Devonte left to go to the Raiders, like they're all still friends. It's much. You gotta different. do what you gotta do. Yeah, dude. you gotta do what you gotta do. You're getting a fucking team, bro. Answer that text. <laughs> what if that? Yeah. What if Tom went up to a teammate and was like, "I just got a text from a guy named Bruce Beal." Listen, obviously it stays bet between us. I just got a text from Bruce Beal. Who the fuck is Bruce Beal? He's the vice president of the Miami Dolphins, successor for the Miami Dolphins. Okay, why is Bruce Beal texting? He said he wants to give me a part of the team. <laughs> answer that text. Yeah, right <laughs> answer, now. Tom, answer that, answer that text, Tom, right now, Tom. That is, I guess it makes sense though that media would think that people would be pissed off at him, but they did lose, didn't try, didn't he? Threw a pick That's six. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, last throw ever, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, on purpose, by the way, because he's not going to the Patriots. Yeah. He, wanted the he wanted the value of the Patriots go down. <laughs> and he was not focused at all. On and that he loves Rabel, so he wanted the Titans to keep going. Uh, at this point, too, his legacy means nothing. No. Uh, once go out there and fucking just roll the ball in the field, play like shit. Yeah. That is also why the Elway thing from the 90s is so crazy, because he did get offered a percentage of the Broncos, and he said no. Just like uh, Dan Marino was offered a percentage of uh, Pet Detective. God yeah. damn. He said, give me the 30 grand. <laughs> Give me the this movie get sucked. <laughs> fool. Give me the fool. Fucking send it in. No flubs. Fucking give me my cash. I mean, yeah. Dan was in the heart of his career, wasn't he? Like, why would you ever always take the points? Well, how about the cash straight up if you're going to go have a good time in Miami in the it's time? Dan Marino. He's already made millions by then. And probably already spent some, too, yeah. if I had to guess. Dan was having a good old time. Dan liked to live. Dan's from the same waters that we are from. Yeah. And we've heard the story. Dan, <laughs> Dan liked to enjoy his life. Give me the cash now. I don't trust that fucking. What's, yeah. uh, what's this guy? Oh, yeah, I probably it? thought Jim Carrey was a slap dick. So yeah. Yeah. Nah, not a chance. Give me Fuck 30 grand. Dan was like, give me 30 grand. Let me name the dolphin, okay? <laughs> Stuff like. All right, let's get out of here. What a day. What a life. What a show. Yeah. Huge show tomorrow. Yeah. Big show tomorrow. Yeah. Hall of Fame show tomorrow, by the way. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah, Hall of Fame show. Real football tomorrow. I mean, it's not real, real football, but it's, it's kind of real. They're kicking real the ball off. Tack one to the ground. Yeah, yeah, they're playing uniforms. Tack football tomorrow. NFL helmets. Yep. yep. Yeah. NFL uniforms. What? Yeah. NFL refs. What? Uh, NFL coaches. What? NFL broadcasts. What? The NFL is... 85% back tomorrow. NFL Boom. Duke. We got Duke on the field tomorrow. Hey, yeah. And Pat, you well, I would assume you would you would know. Like when you get out there and they tackle to the ground for the first time, you get so much more tired. You'll realize like, they've been running around camp and you tag off at the end or you thud up at the end. When you have to go all the way to the ball and get them to the ground, sometimes like oh. you're in the weird habit of chasing the ball and just getting there and tagging off. And you realize during the game, you're dead tired. Oh, wait, I actually got to get this guy down now 40 yards down the field. Also, fourth and fifth stringers who have not gotten a lot of reps in practice all of a sudden getting 70, 70 plays on defense. Yep. And there is puking. There is – we're talking about some guys have, you know, like straw hats on, uh -huh. hot dogs, tennis shoes, just chilling, flipping peanuts in their mouth or whatever, sunflower seeds. And then there's other guys right next to them puking most exhausted <laughs> time they've ever had in their entire life. And it's the biggest game of their life. Mm -hmm. While one guy just chilling, the other guy, tapping helmet, tapping helmet. Oh, we ain't got a guy. You got to go back out there. <laughs> I can't, I can't. And that's what, that's what the Hall of Fame game's all about. That's right, yeah. I'll tell you what, man. Grit. I do define grit, man. Mm-hmm. It's toughness. <laughs> Bro, next Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. go. 
He's awesome. What they're doing right now might be seen on our dogs on Tuesday. Oh, I can't wait. All right. We are in football season. We appreciate you all so much. We will be back in about 21 hours uh-huh. or so talking more of that terrible bullshit about sports. From AJ, the Toxic Table Digs, and everybody behind the glass and everybody in this office, we can't thank you enough for allowing us to do this on the day-to-day. We will see you, Mignogna. Cheers.